there. Hello? Hello. Oh, let me turn down my radio. Cool echo, though. Echo. 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 Oh, not that. Oh, I'm sorry that I came on right after your, uh, your depressed woman was on. Your caller? Why was she crying? She hasn't been able to find someone who's willing to admit that they agree with her that this war is uh, a ghastly disaster and a put-up job. At the moment, uh, Rook feels very alone and isolated, and uh, she's trying to overcome her alienation. So, uh, See, I, I initially thought that I thought maybe she was depressed because she couldn't guess the secret sound on the Don and Mike show. When in fact it was probably her douchebag hitting the floor. Oh, oh, no, no, no. No, actually, what she heard was you, douchebag. What a brilliant, what a brilliant guy. Hi, Don and Mike. We appreciate it. Thank you. Hi. Welcome to our show. Hey, Don and Mike. What you don't know could fill a book. It's the Don and Mike show, and they'll say what they wish. Where else would you rather be than right here, right now? Now I know that I'm uh, I'm the official godfather for Rob's son, but strange at the service yesterday when I got up there. Were they there? These guys showed up. I'm not surprised. And Rob, how many godfathers does this kid have? From a true story, he was a neo-Nazi with one true enemy. Himself, a man of faith, a man of fate, and his soul torn apart. You discretion is eyes. And good afternoon, Mr. and Mrs. Baptism, and all the ships at sea come and taste their friendship. Don Geronimo and Mucko Mera. Yeah. Thank you, Robbie, and hi. Thanks for listening, everybody. Don and Mike Show, new episode on this Monday. Monday. April 20 acred right. from the United States. Call us toll free at 877-365-3636. Canada. Yay! 800-636-1067 in D.C. 202-432-1067. Hi, Donna Mike. Buzz Burbank here. Hi, Bob. Welcome. Hi, everybody. Welcome. Where's the doctor? Welcome. Uh, I'm looking for a doctor. Welcome. Someone called for a doctor? Welcome. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. There you go. That's tight as a nun right there. That's tight. That's tight as the late Mother Teresa. Yes. So wash my feet. <laughs> ah, the great Mother Teresa. <laughs> so uh, here we are. And uh, you are on the air. Hello, Don and Mike show. Hey, Don. See, that's what you do. You just start the yeah, show. Smooth. I got a whole weekend full of stuff. But you, you, you live dangerously. You dive right into the Go calls. right to these mm -hmm. They're all ringing. People hey, are Don. People waiting for the 48 hours of, of nonstop. <laughs> talk to us. Hello there. Hey, Don. Yes. Yeah, listening to you over the weekend was like going to a car dealership and paying sticker price. Ah, you're talking about me at the NFL draft. Ah. Correct. Correct. You were very nice. 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 I was I was mad at some of the picks that uh, some of the teams were making. It was equating it to walking into a dealership and just saying, "I'll take it." You know, rather than <laughs> rather than haggling about the uh, the price of the car. Well, I, I had six hours to fill. Well, did you? I asked you uh, off air. Did you? Did they do well? Yeah. Uh, did well? Did who do? I thought the show. The Redskins to the Redskins. Who knows? <laughs> I mean, they they had three picks out of like two hundred and fifty guys. Wow. Mm -hmm. The team that we were covering had three picks, <laughs> and we were not on the air for any of the picks. We did a six-hour oh show, God. and the the Redskins were not involved. Uh, <laughs> Fascinating. They, well, they were involved. Sure. Uh, I did have a couple of great. Uh, great draft day moments. For those of you who weren't able to listen to this marathon, uh, noon to six Saturday, uh, they brought by Spurrier, the ball coach. Yes. And very afraid. All these Redskins people are coming up to me because, you know, again, they can't discern the difference between doing this show right. and, and doing the Redskins thing, even sure. though I've done it for five years. Right. They're afraid like that I'm going to ask him to take the sex quiz or ask him how big his genitals are right. or ask him, you know, if he smells his farts and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So before they're bringing him up, and you would have thought that they're bringing the Pope up. <laughs> I mean, you've got people coming up to this broadcast site and going, all right, now the ball, and they call him the ball coach. Uh -huh. The ball coach. The ball coach? The ball coach is going to be here in a second. Don, we need to know, are you going to be okay with this? Huh. Yeah, I'm going to be fine with it. I'm what do they mean by that? 
Well, uh, I got I got into that a little bit with one of the uh, Redskins PR people because I said I, I'm going to be fine. I'm a fan. I said mm -hmm. we need to know. She's on a walkie-talkie talking to somebody. <laughs> Over. I'm talking with them now. Don, we need to know. Are you going to handle this professionally? Like, uh, is that what they said? Yeah. Come I, said, on. I said, well. <laughs> There's an outside shot that when he comes up, I might put my hand down my pants. But he probably won't see it because he'll be sitting on the other side. And it turns out that was the wrong thing to say. Yeah, I Because that, so. that didn't go over. They were very serious. <laughs> and, of course, when they brought Spurrier over, it was the first time I've had a chance uh, to meet the guy. Uh, I, I said to him. How are you? I, I said, I'm done. I do a, I, I do a, a radio show. That I know who you are. <laughs> You've probably been been warned about and that's the first you're thing. that unprofessional dj that's the first thing he says i know i know who you are uh, and uh you're absolutely superior. i had a very nice uh very nice on-air conversation is his face as big in person as it seems like on uh, tv no his face is not as big as his face is red in person as yes. it seems on tv yes yes mm -hmm. the reddest face Good. absolutely the reddest face and so, uh, it, so it doesn't look like his face is going to explode no, but but he has the the patience of Job uh, because okay. he was there with uh, all of the uh, the drunk Redskins fans who had been there starting. I think they opened the stadium. I think at ten o'clock on Saturday morning, wow. pouring rain outside, and the Redskins didn't make a pick until about seven o'clock Saturday night. So what do, what do people have to do? And I mean, and if you're a diehard fan of one particular team and your team's not picking, then the draft is kind of like. You know, I mean, what are you going to do? Drink beer? Well, that, did they have beer? Oh, they did. <laughs> All right. They and they had hard liquor as well. Oh, oh okay. So there was plenty oh. of drunk people, and I had a uh, a moment with. Uh, I'll tell you about. It. Hello, Donna, Mike. <laughs> Hello there. Hey. Hey. I wanted to talk about the guy with the lack of a chromosome. Oh, the heckler. Yes, sir. The heckler. Yeah. Uh, you had a heckler. Well, because people were drinking. Yeah. And. That's the only time that the elements of this show crept into this <laughs> NFL show because we're up there padding, waiting for, I don't know what team it was, Tennessee to make a pick. And I was talking about uh, Jeff Fisher's mullet. I mean, this is a, it's like 5 o'clock in the afternoon. What else he hasn't seen? He's got to be the only NFL coach with a mullet. And this guy starts screaming at me from like 20 feet away. Eight on! Eight on! <laughs> Hey, Jerry! Oh, God. Hey, Jerry! You're doing the thing like Lewis uh, the Retard did to, to Jerry Seinfeld. Right, right. And impossible to ignore this guy. <laughs> <laughs> impossible. Coming over, obviously, coming over the microphone. Trash. He also did have a mullet. Pardon me? He also had a mullet. <laughs> yeah, he did have, he had a major mullet. Wow. So... I did what Jerry Seinfeld should have done when Lewis was heckling him. Right. I... Called him up. <laughs> and flicked him off. And, pardon me? First you started flicking him off. Yeah, well, that, you know, that was... You flipping must've... or flicking, sir? Flicking. Were you at the draft? Yes, sir. Yeah, I think we're so getting, I think so we're getting a picture of the mind I'll that goes you, to a draft. I'll tell you that it, at first it was nonverbal because we were doing a radio show about the draft. I just looked his way and just you know, gave him one of these. So like, you, you, know, you, you flicked him off. Flipped him flipped off. Flipped him off. <laughs> like, you know, please... Shut the F up. Well, the guy kept going. And then finally I just said, why don't you just come on up here? And this is where, all right, I want to say, the guy won me over because he was a good-natured heckler. Wouldn't give me a hard time. He was a fan of our show. Uh. So I get him up there and I say, you have a mullet. Yes, I do. I said, how many drinks have you had today? Eighteen. Oh, God. Too many. <laughs> but some of them were Coca-Cola. <laughs> Is that what he yeah. said? I said, how many were Coca-Colas? Three. <laughs> <laughs> He's yelling like that yeah. every time. Yeah. I said, are you drunk? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so you were, uh, by that hour, you were ready for a little additional material, huh? Yeah, so, so we pulled him up and made him... Uh, Made him part of the draft show. <laughs> it was a fun experience. I like it. Hi, Donna Mike Show. Hello. Hello. Yeah. How you doing, Donna Mike? We're doing great. Hey, Buzz. Hey. What are you? Hey, Don. How do you not? How did you? What not... are you eating? Yeah. How did you? <laughs> I was eating a Big Mac. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's all right. How did you not call Larry Michael Mike? You kept on saying, this is Don, this is Larry, and I kept wanting you uh, no, to screw up and call him Mike, but you never did. 
Sir, I think that's a testimony to uh, Larry Michael's strong personality. <laughs> I don't think there's a chance you could mistake anybody. Larry. And Larry was uh, getting mad that people were doing that thing coming up to him. His name is Larry Michael, uh -huh. like the singer George Michael and the right. DJ George Michael. Right. Going, they would come up, uh, people very nice would be, you know, saying, Oh, this is Don and Mike's show every day. You got it right. Right. You're Larry Michaels. <laughs> and, you know, it was a slow burn with Larry because Larry's a sports guy. <laughs> right. And, and he's and not. You guys both deserve hazardous duty pay for doing this. <laughs> yeah. And he's not used to dealing with the, you know, the, the, the booze factor that you and I have dealt with in all of our shows. And finally, <laughs> about the 10th time, he just said in his Larry sports guy voice, It's Michael! Michael, there's no S. My name is Larry Mike. And then the guy. I God. damn it! I, you know what? I had a chance and I forgot to tune in yeah. to you guys, and I it, wanted to listen to this. That part was off the air. Oh, it was off uh, air. Yeah. And as the guy, I just would, was there any testiness that came through on air at all from Larry's standpoint or yours? Oh, from my standpoint, yes. Because <laughs> I mean, that is very. I would your love. So. Of, if you didn't love football with a passion, I mean, if you didn't passionately love football, you would never do something like this. Well, uh, you, you would know, never subject yourself to I do, this. I do. I do love it. I love. Uh, I love everything football. And you'd I, be home watching uh, the draft. ESPN and watch the draft coverage. And I think I uh, have a limited bit of knowledge about all of the teams. Uh, right. I know the Redskins. Uh, again, all of the Redskins escorts. We're very upset when they brought this guy, Matt Bowen, who used to play for the Packers. He's a, a white guy, and he plays safety. Mm -hmm. And so the, I got him on one side. I got the Redskins quarterback, Patrick Ramsey, on the other side. Right. And I, we're interviewing both these guys at the same time. And I turned to this guy, Matt Bowen, and at first I, I show him, uh, I say, you know, I'm here at the Redskins show, but I have my uh, lucky Packer socks on. Right. And, uh, and he didn't bite on that. And then I said, you're a white guy. And there was a stereotype. I was going somewhere with this. And there used to be a stereotype that uh, a black guy couldn't play quarterback, and we're past that now. But there still is a stereotype that a white guy can't play in the defensive backfield. So you're out there getting it done for all of us. And on behalf of all of us white guys, I want to say, yeah. And it's pretty funny. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> laughed. It didn't. Wow. It didn't. Nobody laughed. Offensively very. Well. It was. It was just. <laughs> that was a clonk. Uh, Boy, that's tough. Yeah, so that's it was. Uh, did Patrick Ramsey and the uh, what's his name? Did they uh, seem like they wanted to be there? Uh, Patrick Ramsey. Uh, well, he's young. Let me just say this about Patrick Ramsey. He's young, so yes, he was still enthusiastic about it. I lost Patrick Ramsey uh, in the interview. When I stopped talking about football and commented how hot his wife was, nah. and asked her to step up, and she came over, and the crowd started going nuts because she's like a beauty queen, wow. right? Um, and he was mad at you for doing that. Well, he, he was he was uncomfortable. I, I don't want to say he was mad. He was uncomfortable. He was right. He wanted to give the company line about you know I'm here to do the best. They give a hundred percent, ten percent. Is he the guy? Is, is he going to be the guy? Yeah, he's the quarterback. I mean, well, yeah, until about the first and, game. And then there was uh, <laughs> right. one great a hole moment. Oh, and I, that's another thing I said to both these guys and to all the players that we interviewed. I said, you un you, you understand that today you're here with five thousand people on a rainy day and they love you, but I got to let you know something. If you guys lose the first game to the Jets, all these people right now that are kissing your ass. They're all going to be booing. And all the fans <laughs> went, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah, we will. That's right. <laughs> so uh, so we get done with this segment with Ramsey, the quarterback, right. Right. and he's leaving. And the, the drunk fans are mobbing him like he's a rock star. And I'll say to his credit and to Spurrier's credit, and all these guys, they signed as many autographs as they could, but they had cops around them, and they were being ushered from place to place. So Ramsey leaves, and there's this one guy who looks like Richard Petty. I mean, you got that redneck look. He's got the big, long, pointy sun, sideburns. And he stands up, and he, he looks at me. Because we go on a commercial break, and it's kind of quiet. The hubbub is down. He looks at me and goes, Don! And I'm up on this podium. I go, yes, sir. He says, he threw eight TV passes, and he can't sign an effing autograph for me? He's only thrown eight touchdown passes. And he can't sign an effing autograph. Wow. It was, you get the real passionate fans there. Well, you have the uh, the alcohol uh -huh. at, at play, but you got alcohol along with passion. 
fans that are different than, than the average Redskins mm -hmm. fans. You've yeah. got the fans that These are, are not jobs. It's April. Yeah. These are not jobs. <laughs> so I finally said to him, uh, I'm sure Patrick will be glad to sign your ball. If you leave your ball here, mm -hmm. I'll get him to sign it for you. And, and, so funny. and then the guy said to me, F you, Don. <laughs> you're, you're an a-hole, too. <laughs> and walked away. Anybody that was there, and there was, a, there was a, like 300 people around at that man. time. This is your passion. To, it is so there. obvious that you have it. You are a man of... Uh, it was my choice. A few passions. This is really your passion, because... You wouldn't take that crap. You wouldn't. No. You'd be out of there. No, I, I wouldn't. I hate. I hate when we have to do a show in, in front of people. But it's yeah, it's football, people. and uh, and you know. for a while because the Redskins had no picks, uh, it turned into a Packer show. Because when it came down to pick number twenty nine, it was positive the Packers were going to take this linebacker, E.J. Henderson from uh, the Maryland Terrapins. Uh, and I was saying, this is going to be great for the Packers. I have my lucky Packer socks on. I said, I am positive. This is a lock. Yeah. Right. I said, this is a lock. We, Packers don't have to take the 15-minute thing. This is the guy they're taking. Hey, I have a question for you and about then, the draft. Are the statistics accurate from what I've heard about how many first-round draft choices survive in the NFL? Yeah. That not, it's like what? It's like 20%? Not many. Wow. So I go through this entire big... Because we're just filling time. Ten Still minutes up. saying, I'm positive. And then they we go, okay, let's go to the podium. And Tagley Boo gets up and says, for the 29th pick in the 2003 NFL draft, the Green Bay Packers have selected Joe Ardinger from <laughs> Marijuana a guy, State. A guy you didn't know? And 300, 500 people, they all just start busting my ass by yeah. the right way. <laughs> and, you know, I'm, and I'm mad. Because I'm a Packer fan, and I'm mad right, right. they haven't taken the team. The, the, the team that I like hasn't taken the guy that I wanted. Um, one other thing about the draft, and then we've got to move on to Rob's baby's uh, christening. Uh, something that I found very interesting was with all the stuff that they uh, gave us to work with to fill time during the draft, the NFL gives all of these college guys something called the Wonderlick test. Hmm. And it's the NFL's equivalent, the NFL's equivalent of an IQ test. Mm -hmm. I think the maximum score that you can get is 50 mm -hmm. on this test. Right. We're going to have the test tomorrow. Okay. okay. Yeah. And we're going to give the test tomorrow on the air. All right. Yeah, and I'm going somewhere with this. Uh, yesterday, we had one of the sample questions. Which of the following does not belong in this category? Aluminum? Um, uh, cherry wood, plywood, um, and whatever it is, some other, it was another kind of uh, oak. wood, oh, oak, yeah, something like that. Okay. So it's obvious that, you know, it, it was like three kinds of wood and aluminum. Uh, that's the level of the test. We'll be taking it tomorrow, and, and here's where I'm going with this. We had the Wonderlook scores for all the guys that were being drafted. Mm -hmm. And I enjoyed, as a guy would come up on the draft board, <laughs> announcing there was one guy, I don't remember which guy it was, he was taken in the second round, scored five. <laughs> wow. On the Wonderlick test. Out of 50. Scored five out of 50. <laughs> it's a basic intelligence test. Yeah. Intelligence but, I mean, test. It's, it's like a retard test. <laughs> and so then I got on a riff with Wonder, well, gee, if, if he only scored five, Wonderlick, could he have been the guy who scored the lowest sco score? So I said to Roy, give me the list of everybody drafted. I want to see the Wonderlick scores for everybody that, that's on the draft board. Right. And as it turns out, five was the lowest, but there was about 15 guys that scored six. Oh. There was, there's about 20 guys that scored seven. And, the, and really, the, the questions are that basic? Well, we'll find out tomorrow because okay. we will take, we'll take it. the NFL IQ test tomorrow. It just doesn't get any better than this. <laughs> tomorrow on the show. Very good. Uh, and that's when, uh, that's when the crowd, uh, I felt, started to stray from me. Uh, <laughs> that they were all there to worship yes. these athletes. And when I started pointing out how incredibly stupid... Someone would have to be to score five mm -hmm. on this. What it, what it appears to be, a, I didn't say that, but a borderline, you know, retard test. Uh -huh. uh, I said, C can you just imagine how dumb this guy must be to have scored a five? Meanwhile, they're seeing the picture of the guy on mm. ESPN, and he's like, 
six four, weighs two eighty, mm-hmm. and uh, you know that I'm trying to cover my ass, saying, but of course in the NFL it really doesn't matter how you do on the IQ test; it's all how fast. You can get to the quarterback. How fast you can sack the quarterback. Sure, and uh, there are obvious positions where <laughs> knowledge of the playbook is more important than uh, others. Mm-hmm. Right? But Whatever. a lot of guys <laughs> scored very poorly on this wow. test. The Wonderlick test. And a lot of big name guys scored very poorly on this test. So I can't imagine why that would be. So we will uh, we'll take it tomorrow, and uh, we'll let you know what happened. But I had, I had a great time at the draft. Uh, oh, to follow up on Friday, uh, Mike Honey Honey was uh, just. Uh, Bluffing me, you know, with the whole I'm going out with the martini girl shirt. Uh-huh. I'm going to go meet guys. Uh, as it turns out, Friday night, uh, she was up in Ocean City with my sister in law, Robin. Mm-hmm. Uh, they've been uh, working in the house all day. They were grungy. Uh-huh. They went to something like the, the Iguana Cafe or something like that. For, right. They had met no guys. It was just, it was a total bluff. Mm-hmm. It was a total bluff, and I fell into it. Sure. I abs- I that was the in- idea. I fell into it face first. Mm-hmm. So. You know, there you go. That's that's stupid. Well, I'm sure you felt better. Now. That's stupid old me. But boy, did I do a number on her today? <laughs> if I can just be honest with you, <laughs> a number on her? Well, uh, like a head game? No, no, a, a waste game. A waste game? A wa- my waste. My waist merging with her waist. Oh, oh, oh. oh well. And I don't mean W A S T E. I mean W A I S T. Uh, you know, you know, making bacon. Yeah. Oh, I remember. Yeah. I mean, I. You're talking about sex. <laughs> man, yes, man, did I tap that thing? <laughs> so she should be very happy. She should be. Hold on. <laughs> was she wearing her martini girl shirt? No, she wasn't. She, at the time, she was wearing nothing. Ah, wow. The best time. I find that it works so much better that way. <laughs> I uh, and, and for those of you wondering how you pick up a chick, even if she's married, mm-hmm. uh, and she happens to be married to you for 22 years, uh, I'll tell you the move I used. Uh, she's not going to be around. Hi, baby. Hi, sweetheart. So, you must be feeling satisfied today after those uh, great gymnastics this morning. I don't. I don't think I wish to tell it, my darling. Oh, come on! It was. I thought we were having uh, a private moment this morning. That was my mistake, huh? I am just, I'm just following up on the discussion we had Friday about you saying that you were going to go out in the martini girl shirt, and I was saying that that was a bluff, that you just went out with your sister. And I just wanted to let everybody know out there the smooth move that I put on you when you were in the shower this morning, when I indicated that it was time, I believe it was time for us to come together as, as one. That's not what you said. No, well, why, not, why don't you tell everybody what's because I think this is something... No, I don't want to tell everybody what they said, I, what you said. I open up the... My wife is in the shower, mm-hmm. and I, I pull back the shower curtain. And I say, hey, baby. She said, hi. And I said, hi. I'm looking at her. And she said, yes. And I said, I was wondering how you feel about the old in and out. Is that how you said it? So that's romantic. it. <laughs> and that buzz, that's what she said to me. Yeah. You know, when you, for my money, when you use a line out of a clockwork orange, <laughs> yeah. you're, you're going to get it. Yeah. The old in and out. <laughs> and uh, it worked. It worked great. It worked great. All right, Boo Boo. Thanks for sharing that with everybody. <laughs> well, honey, listen, I'm just balancing out here. I don't want, you know, we had on Friday that, uh, you know, you there, and I. It wasn't a, it, on Friday, I was just. Joshing with I know, you. and I was telling everybody it was a bluff. And, and, I had... told, and I even said that you're the only one that I'd ever go home with. I mean, I was just joking around with you. So we had and... uh, glorious two-way sex today, and uh, went out and washed the car, and just just like on top of the friggin' world. I felt like Superman. I'm telling you that 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 just. Yeah, and I'm not telling you anything you don't know out there, you you you, you listeners. But I'm telling you, you get laid. And you're going to feel a lot better. <laughs> you know, it does something for you, doesn't it? It, it really does. It did for me. I think that's for everybody. Surprise. Sure. Suki, I've got a surprise for you and your buddies when you come home tonight. What is that? Mm, I picked up uh, some uh, stuff for Blackjack. Oh, did you really? Ooh. Oh, great. Yeah. Great. I'll see what you think when you get home. All right. Thanks, baby. All right. All right. Love you. Mm-hmm. Hey, listen. Okay, you just one thing to tease our next segment. How, su- yeah. how surprised were you that Rob and I both didn't instantly burn in, uh, s- uh, just start burning uh, on the spot yesterday at uh, Tripp's ba- uh, baptism? 
No, you know, I think there was something, I think there, you know, maybe the minister couldn't see you because when he was asking for those vows, he didn't look at you. Maybe you were a vampirish and that you were just like, invisible. invisible to, mm -hmm. right, invisible. <laughs> All right, baby. All right, I love, bye. I love you, I'll see you. I love you. Thank you. But I didn't say that just so you would say, well, she's, she's, she's gone. She knows that. But anyway, it was, it was a total bluff on her part with that whole thing Friday. And, uh, you know, I'm glad that you fulfilled your marital obligations, a beautiful spring day. Life is good. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you hit that thing, hit it good, nice. uh, went outside, nice. the nice. nice, felt, just felt, you know, anybody out there, I'm going to say right now, you got the chance right now, go get yourself laid. Get some sex. Mm -hmm. Right now. Do it during our next commercial break. All right. <laughs> Go ahead. You, are you, is that your command? Yeah. Okay. Go get laid. <laughs> Very good. Hello there. Don and Mike show. <laughs> Mr. O'Mara. Hi, Rob. Yes. Geronimo. Hi. 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 How are you? Hi. We're doing great. Well, good. I just uh, I heard you talking about the Wonder Lake test, and uh, some of the questions seem kind of easy, but I believe that the trick behind that is they have like 50 questions, but they only get like 12 or 15 minutes to answer. Well, we... So we, most we, people don't even finish. We will do it under whatever the same conditions are that the NFL draftees have tomorrow on the show. This is a bright, suspicious guy that says, watch out for the trick. Yeah. The trick mm -hmm. of the test. Mm -hmm. I Hello. hate test. I don't test well. Don and Mike, you do well on this test. <laughs> Hello. The metal. Hey, Don. Yeah. That number that you did on Frida, was it a number three? There's a number three. Yeah, there was number three involved, but it was an honor. Okay. Honor. Thank you. <laughs> That's my favorite new toast. <laughs> and go ahead. I can't say it on the air. <laughs> it's a good toast, though. To honor. I can do the first part of the toast. Okay. This is my new one. And this also indicates when you're out in a uh, nightclub or a bar or something like that. It's a good toast. You really get a feel for whether a woman is, uh, you know, uh, how shall we say, a party girl or not. Aha. Uh -huh. Because women react distinctly in two different ways. They laugh. You're okay. If they don't laugh, well, you know. It, it's, yeah, no, Rob, it's actually just a different type of, of approach. I agree with uh, Rob. Move on. But, but uh, well, maybe you're right. Yeah. Uh, so the, the t uh, it's uh, to honor. Get on her, stay on her. Right. And if you can't uh, honor, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, collect. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That works. That's a great toast, Mike. Yeah, well, it was given to me down in New Orleans by. Uh, by one of those ladies that I was walking along the street with. <laughs> oh, one of the girls? Yeah. Uh, yeah. From that night. Yeah, and it was so good that I actually called a buddy of mine back home and gave him the toes. <laughs> I love Don and Mike. And Don and Mike. Yeah. <laughs> Don, I saw you yesterday. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Saturday. You're looking yeah. good, man. I lost some weight. Um, but that's the first time I've ever been around that many drunk white people. <laughs> 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 the best time I've ever had in my life. It was uh, it was a convention of, uh, of drunk white guys. Although, listen, I got to be honest, there were a lot of drunk brothers there. Oh, but see, brothers are different when they're drunk. <laughs> white people, when they're drunk, they're more boisterous. I saw the guy come up to you with a mullet. Yeah. Oh man, <laughs> I was in the back laughing my ass off. <laughs> well, I had quite a few brothers come up that were drunk, uh, and they were not. Well, now they weren't the you know, it, but the brothers that would come up. <laughs> the drunk guys just come and go, hey, <laughs> hey, what's hey, Don, what's happening, what's happening man? <laughs> and, I, and I would get it a lot from the brothers. I'm good, you're looking tight. <laughs> hey, uh, I gotta get one of those footballs. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, we need to try to get free stuff from you. There you go. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, but that was equal. That was not just the black guys, it was white guys asking for free stuff. Is it a young stuff. guy with a mullet? Um, No. He was uh, like forty-ish. Yeah, uh, sir. How old do you think the guy with the mullet was? Oh, uh, good space in his forties. Yeah, hmm. I hope it wasn't my friend Mullet Man. <laughs> can, I, can I ask you? I have a about friend. I have a friend that actually goes by the name, my friend Steve, who goes by the name Mullet Man. And uh, I was at his birthday party. Like There's no week. way you could be friends with this guy. Really? No way. Even. Not even like your boat friends. Really? <laughs> you sure? I'm positive. Okay. Are you? Act, act one more. Um, how do you um, get the mullet? I mean, as a black guy, I'm trying to understand the whole theory, the whole... You cut the front, you don't cut the back. A black guy can get a mullet, but you, I think you'd have to have extensions. Okay. Hey, no, I mean, there was some great mullets from Brothers. I, I, I give you Ray Parker Jr. Oh, God. Oh, yeah. Uh, no, I guess Ray you're right. Ray Parker Jr., one of the great black mullets of all time. And also, there's uh, some, a good black mullet in... Uh, Technically, uh, Little Richard. 
had a mullet. Oh, that was oh, a very that, early girl mullet. here. No, yeah, you're right. That was girl the mullet. It's Lionel Richie right. kind of did for a while. Do you remember the uh, the intended son-in-law in the Eddie Murphy movie Coming to America? Who uh, had the long hair in the back? He was the intended son-in-law. Oh, the good the good line the the good looking guy. You mean Eric Lasalle? He eventually yeah, would be right. in ER. He had okay. a tremendous mullet as well, and yeah. a lot. Of hair relaxer. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you. And, well, now, what about Sam Jackson, like in Jackie Brown? Now, that wasn't a mullet, but he had a ponytail, I right? think Sam Jackson in Pulp Fiction had a little bit of a mullet working. No, I don't think it was no. like an afro. It, no, but it was, there was currently it, afro. But it was long in the back. You have to remember the mullet motto. Business up front, party in the back. <laughs> Very sensible at all. All right. All right, you. Paul, you just settle down, you. I got, I got a whole break to talk about you and your cockamamie family. Great family. Yesterday. Oh, my God. The cockamamie. Uh, Robbie and uh, his dad and, and his mom and, and, and Big Daddy and, and, his, and his wife's dad and, and all of the things that happened yesterday at, at the baptism of Rob's two lovely children. It's always a wild party. Wild. Wild. Wild being anywhere with Rob A, but especially wild being with Rod in a serious church service. Oh, and how did you, did, I mean, obviously, if you're the godfather, you had to stand close to him. I was. Right? And I mean, how did you, <laughs> two feet away from him? Oh, I can imagine. I can imagine Trouble. the smirking. <laughs> there was my... I'll save him when we come back in the break. But there was something that the reverend said at one point when I could not look at Rob. Because I knew if I looked at Rob... That does he, not disappoint. We would laugh. A phone number is 877-365-3636. Call 100, 500 bucks. Secret sound. Good luck. Uh, we'll be right back. This is the Don and Mike Show. If you ever get so low that you don't know which way to go, come on and take a walk in my shoes. Never worry about a thing, got the world on a string, cause I've got the cure for all of my blues. I take a look at my enormous Thank you. And my troubles start melting away. I take a look at my Thank you. Teenage Times are coming to stay. Let me just stop this tape yeah, and say man. there's nothing wrong with your radio. This right. is the way the dummies have decided we can play this and get away with it. Why don't we use a beep? I don't know. <laughs> I, I, can I, I? Who is? I don't want to point fingers, but you know what? The the beep is the way you edit out profanity. I have nothing to do with another the word in or a squish sound or any of I, that. I don't know. I hate that. I don't know. Beep. I take a look at my enormous beep. That's funny. Maybe that'll change because John Fuller has been fired. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, I got great big amounts in the place where it can... Excuse me. He resigned. Oh. <laughs> I am the feelings like a sunshiny day. I take a look at my enormous... Thank you. Thank you. And everything is going my way. Just ruin our bill. Take a look at my... Thank you. My troubles start to melt away. Everything is going. My Why bother playing the tape, right? There is no point in playing. <laughs> That's the edited version. Right. right. <laughs> One, two, three, four. The kings of the best people ever. Don and Mike. I don't know, just destroy that. That's really a funny piece of music. This is a great song. I just can't, can't sing it. You can say it, but you can't sing it. Hmm. Who knows? I, uh, I truly don't get it. <laughs> I don't follow it. Yeah. But uh, changes at the top. Huh. And Infinity Broadcasting. Yeah, that won't, that won't affect that song at all. I. I think you're right about that. Right. Um, hello, Don and Mike show. Wait, you can't hey, say it? Did they just delete that out? I did. You uh -huh. can't describe the size of that. Ah, uh, rules. Yeah. That's that's the way it works. So you can say the word enormous. Mm -hmm. And you can talk a little bit, and then you can say the word penis. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. but, but you, you cannot say that describing it. No. Uh. Hello. This is an enormous CF. Fill in the blanks. Hello there. Hey, it's Chris in Reno. Am I caller 100? Yeah, listen, you are the uh, 100th caller. Uh, listen, Wee. I have uh, for you some stuff. Uh, special, edition, uh, special edition, 
DVD Macho Movie 5 Pack. Oh, uh, hell yeah. Now listen to some good movies. Uh, Reservoir Dogs. Great movie. Quentin oh, Tarantino. You know, made. Great movie. movie. I watched it last night. That's a good one with uh, the guy with Vince Vaughn. And John Favreau. And, cool. and then it's, uh, well, choice is really up to you with Rambo 1, 2, and 3. Oh, uh, each special edition divot is loaded with hours of extra features. Mm-hmm. Extra <laughs> features. <laughs> Courtesy of Artisan Home Entertainment. Mm. Buy them at your favorite retailer. I'm really excited about the extra features in Rambo. Now, are you ready? Uh, it just doesn't get any better than this. <laughs> get Carter in there. Are you ready? No, it's not there. Are you ready to play for five hundred dollars? Yes, sir. Common everyday sound. Here are your clues. Yellow. Sixteen. <laughs> You got a guess? Only 16. Do you even have a guess? Yeah, I have a guess. I have good. a really good guess. I think I got it. Mm. Thank you. Mm. It was good. I like hearing that enthusiasm. Hope you win. Please don't answer till Mike sings like... Public Enemy. Featuring <laughs> Anthrax. Caller, <laughs> name this sound. There it is. That's, well, I've just given it away. But it very well could be the sound of someone using an editing machine mm-hmm. to chop up a pretty funny little parody song. Hey, how low can you go? Jeff Bro. Well, the brother knows. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. For $500, what's the sound? That is the sound of a yellow number two pencil being broken in half. <laughs> I can't tell. They did this once before, and we had a winner. Console, so I can't tell. They're, they're getting tapes, and uh, I don't know what they're doing. What's the word from Planet Crackpot? No. No. Oh. They, you know, they were almost doing the double fake. There. Oh, we're, we're sorry. sorry. No, thank you. Don't forget, every guess is a clue. Like, clue for you. Clue for, yeah. for you. Thank you, my mm. friend. Listen, we're going to let the ridiculousness, uh, the, the ridiculousness, the ridiculousness yes. of the editing of that song pass by. Yeah, even though it angered us both greatly because we remembered a time when we played that song on the air and what a funny song it was. It's a great song. Let's um, instead, uh, let me tell you about the baptism yes, of Rob's you. son. Congratulations, Rob, if yeah, I didn't Rob. say yeah. that to you on Friday. Absolutely. Uh, he is a hateful hump, <laughs> but he has a uh, wonderful wife who talks an awful lot <laughs> to my wife. <laughs> They have that trait in common. And Rob does have two beautiful children. Yes. There's no doubt about it. Uh, Julia. And how old is Julia now? Two and a half. Two and a half. And Robert, or as, as everybody calls him, Trip, because mm-hmm. he's uh, Robert uh, Spiewak the Third, had the baptism yesterday. And uh, Frida and I were honored when Robbie and uh, Carrie asked us to be the godparents for a trip. And uh, yesterday was the, the big deal. The day when you go to church, and uh, fortunately they, they don't do that, that thing anymore where they take the kid and actually dunk the kid in a tank of water. Well, not in that service. Depends on the church. Depends on the church. Uh, the guy did, uh, the, the reverend did it uh, quite nicely. Julia's old enough that she was fine with it, mm-hmm. that she just took off her Easter bonnet, and uh, they put a little water on her head, and she laughed. And uh, <laughs> it, I really it got into it because it, it means a lot to me. It really does. I mean, you know, I've said a long time, Mike's my best buddy, mm-hmm. Rob's my best friend, and it, it's a real honor to be a, a godparent, even yeah. though it's yeah. hopefully nothing will ever happen right. to Rob or Carrie. And when the moment came when, as, as Rob's kids were being baptized yesterday, uh, and I thought it was a real, real nice move by Rob and Carrie that Julia was standing with uh, Rob's uh, friend Brad and his girlfriend, mm-hmm. and... Careful. That's not his fiance. That's Carrie's sister, Michelle. Oh, ah. oops. That's all right. I get him mixed up. Uh, well, where was Brad's girlfriend? His fiance was sitting back with Brad's mom. Um, there was, you know, we filled up, all the godparents and the parents filled up the front row, so we had to split up. Yeah, you're both wrong. Uh, his fiance was with me. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's a joke, Brad. Congratulations, <laughs> Tina. Anyway, I got, I got the whole trip. And uh, he he could not have been a better behaved little guy. He was uh, in really good spirits. I told Terry that's the best three hours of behavior we've gotten out of that boy you know, since it, he was born. Wow. At christenings, it is strange. There are some kids that, of course, will lose it. But a lot of kids, I've been to a few of them where they, they just kind of chill out yeah. until the moment of water. And the moment of water can usually, uh, you know, come... Yeah. Yeah. Two stage screams. Right. <laughs> trip was uh, uh, trip was great. I, and, uh, I picture your kid, too, uh, if it ever does scream, screaming yeah. like a... Like, yeah. like a flu 
the flu shot. <laughs> he was uh, none of that. He was uh, really well behaved yesterday. Yeah. It, it was a battle who was uh, better behaved. Rob's. Uh, how old is Trip now? He is. Uh, Seven months? Rob, seven wow. months old. Well, here's or, my, for or my 18-year-old son, <laughs> who at one point, actually, we are sitting in the front row. Right. Fell asleep. Oh, right. Uh, during, <laughs> it was warm during the, <laughs> during the service. Wow. Let me ask this question. Who was better behaved, uh, Rob's young son or you guys? <laughs> um... <laughs> It Rob's was, son. <laughs> and, and, no, it was it was really tough because in the front row and it's myself and I'm next to Brad and Brad's next to Don. This invites trouble. Mm -hmm. And the only trouble I caused is right before the lady started to sing her solo for special music, she got up and I just whispered to Brad, "You better look out." Just and it didn't even make any sense. <laughs> and and Brad uh, had to stifle. Yeah, it's one thing to get normal people in a uh, church yeah. setting. Uh, yeah, you get abnormal people uh, in a church setting. And no more than like seven feet away from the minister because mm -hmm. we were right up front. I mean, not yeah. even a pew in front of. Us. Was there ever a body shaking where everyone was kind of doing one of these numbers? Or no, no, no. Everybody was everybody was cool, but there uh, was no eye contact. Ever. <laughs> everybody was, ever just wanted to get through it. Yeah, we could not. I could not look at Rob's friend Brad. I could not look at Rob. Yeah. The only thing is, I'm standing there holding Trip, and he's being a, a just a wonderful little kid. Mm -hmm. And 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 the Reverend's saying all the stuff. And the one thing that he said that I didn't look at Rob at <laughs> when we were making our promises, you know, in the eyes of God, right. right? The promises that you're going to keep, right? Being the godparents and Rob and Carrie being the parents, he says the, the part about hate. He says, "Do you vow to do everything within your power?" To oppose hate for the rest of your life. Wow. And he said yes, too. just not three to seven. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> we, we said yes, but I really was waiting for the lightning bolt to come yeah. through the ceiling. All of a sudden, the church yeah. starts shaking. There was stained <laughs> glass windows <laughs> caving in. I couldn't, I couldn't look. He said, "Do you ever? Would you promise to do everything you can?" To oppose hate. It sounds like that was a noticeable one too. You know. Yeah, I mean, and maybe there was a little pause. Maybe the Reverend knew what he was doing. Yeah, well, you know, we're doing the best we can. <laughs> Very good. So, uh, so now we we got done with the event, and Rob ki Rob's kids were great. And now, uh, from my perspective, I'm going to tell you about Rob's family. Mm -hmm. I'm interested to hear this because they are they're quite a family, right? First off, first off, Rob's dad, Bob, right. We've always said this is a great guy. Oh, oh yeah. Cool. Uh, yeah, I'm uh, a big totally. fan of Rob's uh, father, yeah, and, uh, and and we the, the early jokes, and I don't know, hey, it really hasn't changed that much. Uh, but you know, really, way back when, a few years back, Rob's father, we were just amazed that uh, that, that Rob was fathered by by this man. Because he still looks nothing like his. They don't daddy. look anything like mm. alike. About 18 months ago, I started looking older than him. I don't know right. how this happened, <laughs> but uh, huh? he is. Uh, it's very true. Rob's dad looks younger than yeah. Rob, and unlike Rob. Well, no offense, but... No, none taken. This will be good. Your, da <laughs> your dad's like male model. Yeah, he's handsome. I mean, he, he's a good-looking dude. I'm hoping to catch that eventually. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm having the, uh, the conversation with Rob's dad before the show and Rob's, Rob's mom, mm -hmm. uh, you know, who nobody calls mom. She's Sharon, right? right? Yeah. And Rob's yeah. dad is, is, is Bob. Mm -hmm. And Rob's dad was mentioning to me that because the, of the way Rob's family is with the... Mom and dad, uh, you know, splitting up, but they're still friends and then getting remarried. He was saying to me, I'm Grandpa Bob, he said, but it's very confusing for Tripp and for Julia because they have, I believe, between uh, all the family, seven grandparents. Eight, wow. if you count Big Daddy, who's the great-grandfather. So, so, and Rob, but, you know, I, it's, you know, funny me. I, I uh, looked to the, the parents, the relationship they have. I asked Rob a lot of questions about it because of the situation I'm in. Mm -hmm. And uh, your, uh, your, your parents who divorced when you were younger, right. they do get along very well. Perfect. Right? Very, so that's why everybody well. can be in the same same church and together. That was, and that's really cool. And Carrie's parents, um, also and they're also divorced, divorced also right? Also remarried. Mm -hmm. They all get along. Carrie's mom and her stepmom are very close <laughs> friends, which I've always thought is not very. Not very common, but very cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very that's cool. cool to happen. And yeah. kids look at it cool, don't yeah. they? Oh, I mean, absolutely. really, and that's yeah. good. That's kind of like when I hear stories like that, I think that's that's what you have to do. Okay. Anybody that splits up, if you can, if you can pull it off, right. it's really a good idea to maintain a, a friendship because I think the kids, your offspring, mm -hmm. respond better to that than, than they do if you're, you know, at Swords Point. So Rob's dad was the guy, even after before and after the ceremony, who would always come over and manage to say to me, the right thing to make me feel more comfortable. He would say what I was thinking to a smaller extent, certainly than Rob and the rest. He would just say, do you believe this? 
Do you yeah. believe? Do you believe how long this is going on? Well, at least you get to leave soon. <laughs> I'm going to be here. Right. I'm going to be surrounded by these people all day long. <laughs> so I would laugh. And now, and now, I, I, and everything that I'm going to say about about Rob's immediate family, they're all meant. There really is nothing bad. Of course. No. I'll start. I mean, just... Rob, run and hide when he <laughs> no, no, says no. that. No, no. Understand where I'm coming from. I'll start with Carrie's mom, who could not have been nice to me, where she Stop. said, well, no, this is a nice thing. No, I'm saying her name is Dot. That wasn't Dot. Dot. Oh, 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 do you think he said stop? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> she came up to me directly after the service, and she came to me with a sense of urgency, and I thought, oh, I have something up. Cause I'd like you to leave now. <laughs> she came up and she said, I want to let you know that I didn't cry at all during the service until... And I was I was holding Trip in my arms and he was like a big boy. He was sitting, like, his lap was in my hands. I, I leaned down a couple times, kissed him on the head. Right. Because he is just such a sweet kid. Uh -huh. uh, she said, that's when I started to cry. Uh, right. She said, that was such a touching moment. Mm -hmm. and I thought I, she was crying because you were trying to suck his soul out. I didn't I, know. <laughs> so, so I'm thinking now at this point. Steal his breath. I'm thinking this is going pretty good. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Because I got, I've bonded with Rob's dad. Mm -hmm. Here I made, I've touched Carrie's mother. It couldn't go any better. Well, I go inside into the church for the reception, and I meet, for the second time, Big Daddy, ah. Rob's grandpa. Ah, very good. Now, what is he? He's 88. 88. Yeah, God first, bless him. First time I met him, a couple years ago, first thing he said to me was, don't say anything wrong. <laughs> that was the opening. <laughs> right. Right? I said, hey, Big Daddy, I'm Don. Don't say anything wrong. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Yesterday... After all the stuff, they're down there having cook cookies and, and sandwiches, and he comes up and goes, hey, Big Daddy. And he shakes my hand, and he says, I could break your arm right now if I wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> now, this is out of left field. Yeah. I'm, I'm just looking at him going, okay. Uh and I never got a, an answer as to why he said that he could break my arm. Just wanted right? you to know. But I, I said that that's fine. Did, did you ever ask Big Daddy why he said that? I did, and his he can be awful cagey sometimes. And his response was... Cagey's a great word. It seemed like the thing to say. <laughs> and knowing him quite well, my guess is that he was trying to to be an 88-year-old shock jock towards you and try and, like, beat you to the bunch. And, you know, it's I guarantee you weren't expecting to hear it. No, I wasn't. <laughs> That's what you got, and he never broke your arm. No, no, he didn't. So then, <laughs> Thank goodness. I had met it's Carrie's... the funniest goddamn you know, thing I've heard. <laughs> so then I, I, I had met Carrie's mom, who told me this wonderful thing about, you know, when you kiss Trip, right? I couldn't hold that, so I started crying. Carrie then says, brings over her dad, Ed. His name is Ed, right? Right. Big Ed. Right. This is my dad, Ed. And we start talking, and now it's Carrie, Rob's wife, yeah, Big Ed, and me, and we're just talking in general. Did you get even one word in? No, I'm just curious. No, <laughs> he's going going on about the, the, his grandchildren that he loves the grandchildren. He says, but I'm not surprised that they turned out to be such lovely children. They look, look, they look at them. They look, they're handsome. They're going to grow to big, big, big and strong. And then he points at Carrie and he says. When you get a woman like my Carrie, look at her. Big bosomed. <laughs> now, oh, my. Now, oh, dear. How do you respond to that? Yeah. Uh, it's the dad, right? And yeah. you break his arm. I'm trying. Yeah, very, you send him over to Big Daddy. I am trying very hard not to look that immediately. The yeah. stepdad or the no, real the, dad? The dad dad. Her, her blood dad. dad. Wow. I'm trying not to look at Carrie's uh, boobs and, like, say to him. Despite the invitation. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. he was saying to me. Well, it's no surprise these children have, have, have come out the way that they've come out. They, they come from, from good bloodlines. Uh -huh. Why, my daughter Carrie here, well, just look at how big bosomed she is. <laughs> and he meant it in a, in, a, in a swell way, I'm sure. In a father way. And I, uh, was right. from like 1700s Williamsburg or something? <laughs> look at her teeth. <laughs> I didn't have, look at her teeth. I did, my response, I believe, big bosomed. <laughs> I believe my response was, I said something. Well, we've uh, we've been by the the pool and uh, yeah, I, I I can tell you they're pretty great, right? And and he said, oh no, he probably was he said, cool with that. He said, 
They sure are. Huh. Wow. It's unusual. Yeah, it was, uh, I, I didn't know it went to that extent. I know that uh, Don checked in with me later on that evening, and uh, Carrie handed me the phone, and she said, oh, and tell him that his big-bosomed friend says hi. Ah, very well, good. I, 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 maybe he misspoke, but it was all flattering. Okay. Of that's, course. That's, good. That, that's, that's, that's was, terrific, you know. There was nothing You bad. might want to get her hypnotized. I just want to say that. <laughs> there, was, yeah. there, was, <laughs> there was nothing bad. Uh, the, the, the only awkward part was... was a, when we were leaving, because Rob, Rob is a modern American family, being as he's got the mom and dad that are divorced, right. but are still friends, mm -hmm. and they've got the new spouses walking around and remembering who's who, and yeah. then a great Carrie's, job. and Carrie's parents are divorced. You know, walking around and saying to Big Ed, it was nice to meet. Everybody's remarried. Then go all but my father, the smart one. Then okay. Going, then going to Carrie's mom and saying hey, goodbye, <laughs> and then and then go, tell your dad you give your dad a big handshake when you see him. Oh, he knows he's smart. He knows. <laughs> and, then, and then going back to to Rob's mom. <laughs> I'm gonna call your dad one of these things. <laughs> and the and the problem with Rob's mom is that you can't get off. Uh, uh, pardon the pun. Easy. You can't. You can't get off easy by just saying big bosom. Hey, mom. <laughs> you know, like with, with Carrie's right, mom, I right. would just say, Mom, we got to get going. Right. Uh, well, with Rob's mom, everybody calls her Sharon. Right. right. Even Rob's daughter. Now, this is it was funny. It was, Julia would say, Hey, Sharon. Sharon. Which we're working on. My mom wants to go by Shay Show as her grandmother name. She wants a granny name. Right. Right. But right. it's it's. I mean, you can't enforce Shay Show when everyone's calling her Sharon. But that's so. the kind of the modern hipster. Yeah. The Sharon thing I've always considered to, that you call her Sharon, right? Very progressive. That's that's progressive type sure. of thing, right? Cool. So uh, I'm walking around and I said, and I'm, I'm standing behind. <laughs> Sharon, who was holding Trip, and I said, uh, "Hey, uh, 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 mom," <laughs> and she didn't look. And I said, right. uh, "Rob's mom," and she was still in a conversation with someone. And I said, uh, "Trip's uh, grandma," and if I finally said, uh, uh, "Sharon," and then that's when uh -huh. she, heard said, she heard you. Yeah, she said, oh, "Oh, are you leaving? I'm sorry that you're leaving." So right. it was, it was rough to keep everybody, yeah. and and then. After Big Daddy said the thing to me about it, I, I could break your arm. Was that late in the game? Or did he no, that, that was that was really on, right? Oh, that really? was like half I can break your arm. <laughs> Let's go for the break your arm with one hand. Big Daddy, nice to see you again. Why I could you? break your arm right now. <laughs> I said, okay. Right. Nice, nice to meet you. <laughs> you know, and then, when you're and, 88, you sort of have card blocks. Yeah, sure. you can say whatever the hell you want. And then I got to the with the... And of course, uh, my big bosom daughter. Right. <laughs> well, okay, yeah. I've uh, been on a beach, and I agree. They're wonderful. They are marvelous. So I said something like, "They're wonderful." Yes, they are. So you didn't stick around for the butter churning or anything? <laughs> yeah, like that? No, we, the rug no. beating? No, we 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 did not. We uh, well, doing the laundry on the rocks. Well, you did. A, you were marvelous at remembering names, and this is the honest truth. And Carrie gives me heck about it. <laughs> that was strong language. That's, wasn't that's, that's, easy. See, that's, easy, that fits Rob. the whole big bosom thing. And then, <laughs> then they got in their covered wagons and left. <laughs> um, I still can't tell all of my Uncle Dana's kids apart. And I just, a lot of hey you. And who is stuff. Uncle Dana? Uncle Dana is the youngest of Big Daddy's kids, and okay. he has five boys. Your father's brother. No, my mother's brother. Mother's brother. And anyway. mom is one of eight, my dad only one of five. So oh, yesterday, like surrounded wow. by Spiwax. Uh, always fun to be with Rob. But <laughs> does everybody? Uh, I'm curious about the the extended Spiwag family. Does any uh, anybody have his uh, sense of humor? I mean, his obvious sense his of humor. His dad does. His dad does. Yeah. His dad does. Right. Pretty direct. Yeah, that's where he gets it from. And uh, they're all. And you know, I have to again apologize for the overwhelming shyness of my family. So. <laughs> oh, everybody's kind of gregarious. And, and uh, particularly uh, my uncle Sam, who really just I think was auditioning for the third chair in the studio when he came up to us. <laughs> Sam <laughs> definitely made his presence known. They were all very nice, yeah, and uh, we were humbled as we all as we were. Uh, sure. You know, when you ask us to be trips, uh, godparents, and he's a great kid. And Julie is a, a wonderful little girl. And the, the one last thing I think is I know Rob's right too shy to say this about his kid, but she cracked everybody up when that at one point they got the they bring the little kids up on up on stage there the altar the altar and they were saying, do you know what Easter is all about? Huh. Right. And Julia said loud as can be for everybody to hear. 
Easter Bunny candy. That's right. <laughs> Which, of course, was you know not not the answer they were going. What are we talking? Two and a half here. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. She's not, allowed. Not the answer they were going and for. And she also chimed in with a second guess of eggs. Eggs, <laughs> but not not also correct. Anyway, she's, a, a, she's a great kid. And it was a pretty good time, Rob. We're we're honored that you accepted, and, and thank you. Ah. And, et cetera, et cetera. and all the kids are invited to that America's Funniest Kids show. That's right. And We're the most talented, most talented kids. Kids. Great. It's hosted by Lance Bass. Well, Lance, so I, Lance Bass and Mario Lopez. Lopez. So I said to Rob, uh, as I was leaving, uh, we made a pass, you know, check in later, mm -hmm. see how we, Rob's making it through the, re through the day, because right. the house is going to be full of relatives. So I was waiting. I didn't hear from him. I called him about 8 o'clock last night. <laughs> and I said, how you doing? He said... Oh, we're down to about 18 people. Wow. No, it wasn't as bad as all that. I said that, but we were down to, uh, I think, nine guests, nine or ten <laughs> guests. <laughs> anyway, people. It's a he, long day. He yeah. said to me, my... He loved them dearly. Here's, Great to have them. Here's what I didn't get, but I finally was hit to when he explained to him. He said, my dad and I are in Greenville. And I said, huh? He said... About two hours ago, we started drinking Beck's beer. <laughs> and you know the color of, of, of Beck's bottles? Yeah. It's green, so it's Good a hooch. lovely trip to... I was the mayor last night. <laughs> mayor of Greenville. There you go. Uh, it's always fun to be with Robin. Very interesting to be with Robin. The house of God. Yeah, yeah, and then you guys survived, which no is uh, planes, amazing. No lightning, no locusts, plagues, or frogs. You don't seem to have any birthmarks or burn marks on your foreheads or anything. <laughs> no, I was really expecting something out of the devil's advocate, but really it went quite well. <laughs> Good. Yeah, so, anyway, thank you again, And thank Robin. you, and Frida, we and, do appreciate your it. Congratulations. Your family couldn't be nicer. And, uh, yeah, Mike, one thing that I would tell you, you should, now that you're out there, yeah, you should hook up with Rob's dad. Because yeah, I, well, I've always, you know, Rob's dad and I have always been, uh, you know, good friends. I always like him. I always I seek him out when he, he came out. Last time I saw Rob's dad was like at a bowling thing we did, right? Yeah. yeah. Right. Good if guy. you just got his leftovers. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You'd be doing okay. Sure. Sure. Yeah. And I, you know, I've always seen, you know, there's, there's a smoothness there. And, uh, you know, I, I tend to always look at Rob and go, you know, Jesus, what happened? What happened? <laughs> what, what, what happened? <laughs> I don't think so. Okay. Thank you. Will. We got... We got a break. Uh, we'll be right back. This is the Don and Mike Show. Gee whiz, gang. Looks like the killer gutted the victim, strangled him with his own intestines, and then dumped the body in the river. <laughs> You're right, Scoob. We're dealing with one sick son of a bitch. The Don and Mike Show. You can call Don and Mike anytime from anywhere in America. 877-365-3636. They're ready to believe you. And in my club, I will splash the pot whenever the f I please. Don, Don, Don. Mike, Mike, Mike. Don and Mike Show. I was on the phone to my wife. She was telling me uh, before you, she was telling me before she got something for the guys. She got me that edition for the poker table, the blackjack edition, the blackjack thing. Uh -huh. So now we can play blackjack when you guys come over. That would be like a nice little uh, brain relief from the regular mm -hmm. poker index. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you get your green visor? I don't know, but she said she got me the uh, the plastic thing. Oh, the shoe. The shoe. Uh -huh. That'll hold five decks. Yeah. That's That'd be fun. All night. So Very bring your money. Bring your money and prepare to lose. <laughs> Let's play some uh, some blackjack. Hi, Donna Mike Show. Yes. Hi. Good afternoon. Hey, I was listening. I was listening to you uh, complaining about how they butchered up your song, and I was at a car show this weekend, and I saw a uh, big Chevy dually with a set of plastic balls hanging off the research, and there's a bumper sticker that said "Got Balls," and if you go to uh, trucknuts.com, you can order a set of those. And get now, the stickers. Now, 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 well, what, now, what's now, going on yeah. here? That has nothing to do. If, if you want to call in with a plug <laughs> for some stupid product, no, no, say, no, I no, want no, to give I, you a well, plug. I didn't mean it like that. I no, if you were going to give a plug, you would say something along the lines of, "I have a good friend Jim at Satman Communications who came out to my house <laughs> and fixed my computer on his Sunday, wow. and I want to thank him. And if you ever need satellite TV." Call my friend Jim at Satman Communications. Well, yeah, now, that is a plug. It's yeah. clear. Well, it's easy to understand. But you don't call up with some convoluted thing about our song about... You did it in a sneaky way. Well, I wasn't trying to be sneaky. Oh, yes. come on. Get out of here, please. Dink. Hello, Don and Mike show. <laughs> Hello. Hi. 
Hi, my name is Takesha. I'm calling in from D.C. Yes, baby. And I just want to let you know, I stumbled upon your station about two weeks ago. And I can only catch it when I'm driving around D.C. So sometimes people laugh at me because I'll sit at a light because I'm trying to adjust my antennas to try to catch your show. But it's great. I think you guys are awesome. Thank and you. I, and I love your whole rant about the whole silly thing. That was hilarious. Uh, baby, let me tell you something. If you live in D.C. and you have, you're having problems picking up WJFK, try, oh. try listening to 105.7. Are you in your car right now? I am in my car. You want, you want to try, you want to try 105.7 right now? I'll try it. All right, let's try it right now. Because it depends where you are in the metro area. Mm -hmm. 105.7? 105.7. Right. That's, that's, no, that's, what, that's what I have you on now. Oh, well, yeah. then try 106.7. 106.7. Let's see how that works. As everyone's going at me. Cause I where are you exactly? Right. Where, where, I am on, I'm driving, about to get on the Beltway now, so I'm actually up towards uh, Silver Spring, so I can catch you really good up this way. Silver Spring 106.7 ought to come in. Yeah. Okay. Well, I been, just want to let you guys know that I think y'all are awesome. Don't worry about Philly. They'll be okay. You'll, you guys will pick up because you guys right are on. great. Thank That's you, honey. Nice. Well, welcome and we appreciate it. Thanks. Um, really nice. I've been asked by. Uh, right on! Right on! I've been asked by the, uh, <laughs> the powers that be here to say, and i got to say this in a way that doesn't get us in trouble with the ratings company, but. If you live in Washington, D.C., you probably know that if you drive around the Beltway, if you get, like, towards Silver Spring, Laurel, Greenbelt, Greenbelt, can't pick up WJFK. But you can hear Live 105 from Baltimore, 105.7. As a matter of fact, in a lot of places, you can get Live 105 better than you can get WJFK. But the important thing to remember is you're listening to the Don and Mike show. That's the thing. Okay? Did I say that in a way that is you're safe? You're fine, and you, 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 you probably don't want to elaborate on it, and the way you said that is absolutely fine. Just remember, at all times, you're listening to the Don and Mike show. Perfectly legal. Right, okay? This is what you're listening to. The Don and Mike show. That's that's what you're listening to. I, I don't think you could possibly make it any clearer. No matter if you're listening on 105.7 <laughs> or 106.7. 105.7, 106.7. Thank you. And, and yes, we, we thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, um, so. Hello, Don and Mike show. <laughs> you're, you're gone. Hello. <laughs> Don and Mike. Yeah. How are you doing? Great. I want to tell you about a show that I saw last, I think, Thursday or Wednesday night. It was about John Carney. Did you happen to see it? Uh, John Edward, you mean? Yes. Yeah, what about him? They, they called him out on how he does the show. You should ask Frida if before the show, when she's standing in line, if anyone talked to her or any random person. Now, who, who is this that, uh, that called him out? Um, it was a special on ABC. Was, I was calling out psychics. They had, like, palm readers. Um, People speaking to the dead. Oh, you know what? Uh, g give me a give me a day or two. I got that thing T vote. I know that they did a special exposing the oh. secrets of psychics. Good. I've got a T vote. Let me watch it. I dare you. You never watch the Alphabet Network, Doc. I uh, I T vote stuff though, Rob. I don't know. You know Hello. Uh, I, I think what he was talking about is a technique that's also used by evangelists at tent shows. Yeah. Which is oh, yeah. You you stand in line to get in, and you're like every third person. It's actually on the payroll of the guy that's doing the show. Hello, Don and Mike. Hey, did you guys see Arnold on NASCAR yesterday? Yeah, and the and the deal is, you know that Arnold doesn't care about NASCAR, <laughs> but he's got to promote that movie. Chantal Men. Yep. Start your engine. So I says. I says. <laughs> I'm so angry at Jimmy Johnson because every time, like, the race is going to end and they're going to have the racers you want to finish in the order that they want, Jimmy Johnson, like, spins his car out, <laughs> like, three times during the season. I love the uh, fact that uh, yesterday, uh, when Dale Jr. went in for a pit stop, mm -hmm. The guy, now keep in mind, these guys, and I, I know that they're trained and, and they really, they're under the gun to, right. to get these cars in and out in, in under 15 seconds. But I guess 
They let his car go, and one of the tires didn't have two of the lug nuts on it. <laughs> oh, so oh. that'll hurt when you're going 200 miles an hour. So he's driving around, and he says, "This doesn't feel right." And and of course, you gotta have four. So they. They they flagged him and he has to come back in and get the other ones put on, and then they had the, him in a little box after the race where he was saying, "I'm pissed. <laughs> you, you bet I'm pissed. I'm mad." You know, it's funny because I, I I watch the end of races. I really don't watch much more than the end of it. And really, I I've, I've seen now on two separate occasions. Uh, this guy, Jimmy Johnson, who is, has this tendency to F up at the, at the end of a race, and he'll take two or three drivers out with him when he spins out. And he did it again yesterday. The last time we talked about NASCAR, I think, was when Jimmy Johnson spun out, and I told you about the guy being so angry because he took him from, right. I think, 8th place to 11th place, and the guy was spinning his wheels trying to get to Jimmy Johnson. He did the exact same thing yesterday, drove a guy down into the infield. The guy was going yeah, sideways. Look, look at yeah, you used to bust my balls, and yeah. I used to bust balls about NASCAR. But who doesn't like it? I, I, you know, I find it's like anything else. The more you educate yourself about it, the you should not. Not, I hesitate to say what I'm going to say. Say it. Well, Right. Say it. I'm a hypocrite. Actually. You know what I? These think? are not. They interview a lot of drivers, like the guy that won yesterday, Bush. Ooh. He is not. A, yeah, it's not a dumb guy. It's a guy that knows. And, and there's a lot of techniques and stuff. And but there are a lot of dumb guys. Just like well, no, there are a lot of guys from the south, but there's a lot of like techniques. The, there's a lot of dumb guys that play football. You know, there's a lot of good, dumb guys in everything. Just, I think there's more dumb guys in NASCAR than any other sport. You mean drivers or in the stands. Yeah. 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 Yes, and yeah. It's pretty, it's pretty amazing mm -hmm. stuff. But, but you know, you can't help. You know, ever since I was forced by my friends to sit down and watch the Daytona 500, <laughs> but that's what I like to. Yeah. It sounds right there. Yeah. My first time yesterday for a couple hours mm -hmm. as a means of escape in my home, yeah. and um, it was actually very cool. Fox had it in high def. Mike, you'd love it. Right. And um, <laughs> I just wanted to say, you should I that. looked at it after watching. It's like high tech golf. Because it's a good Sunday afternoon sport like golf. It's right. on all afternoon. Right. You can walk away and come back. It's yeah. not going to change a whole bunch. Absolutely. And it's a very agreeable time filler. Hello there, Don and Mike. <laughs> hey, Don and Mike. How hey. you doing? Okay. Yeah, um, just so you know, it's really five lugs, but I, I, I really, you know, uh, I'll tell you one thing five, that really five makes it a pain. Yeah, five or four. It really does make a difference, even if you do lose one. But I will speak from experience. From yesterday, I was in New Hampshire at the Bush North race, which is a, another division of NASCAR. We had we had a problem on pit road where everybody was so crowded. Hold on, about let, me three just, cars let me just take a very quick vote because you're talking about some kind of, I guess, minor league racing here. <laughs> let me just take a very quick vote among my peers to see okay. who cares. Uh, all those who uh, care about this guy's call, please say uh, yay. I didn't think you were going to say yay. All all guys who want me to uh, hang up the phone now say yay. Yay! yay. Goodbye. Yay! <laughs> I'm sure he meant well. There you go. Do you uh, happen to see our friend Nancy on the golf coverage yesterday? No, I didn't work my way up there. A little emotional moment. Mm. Was he crying? Well, Freddie Couples. Uh, oh, uh, he's from Houston. Well, Freddie's been out of it and had a lot of turmoil in his life, a lot of ups and downs, and they didn't think Freddie was going to win a uh, a tour event. And I'm a huge fan. Absolutely. But he did the kind of crying that you don't do on TV. He did the kind you get choked up, but you don't do the. <laughs> How about after we get finished with the broadcast, you come with me to the CBS party? And he did that, and they let him go. Go sign your card, uh, Freddie. Go ahead and it. Freddie did the kind of, and then Jim Nance, who is a close friend. I, uh, they may have been. I think they're very close friends. Aren't they? Isn't he one of the three amigos? I think he's one of the three amigos. Are you gay with this guy, Jim? Absolutely. Okay. And Jim, at the very end, he, you didn't hear an obvious cry, but you said, "For everybody at CBS." And there was a pause. Jeez. I wish somebody had that on tape. Wow. The end of the it. tournament. Absolutely. I'd like to know if anybody was watching the end of the golf tournament after Freddie cried, and they sent him into the scorers tent. If they thought, if you thought Jim, <laughs> Jim Nance was crying too. Jim, are you a girl? Absolutely. It was, uh, it was a very emotional moment. Anytime you see a guy that hasn't won on tour, and uh, it was, uh, but I expected him to get. He was completely composed, and they said, "This means a lot uh, to do this here." 
Oh, unbelievable. And, you know, it was, uh, you know, and, and you, I just... You guys have been unbelievable. You don't expect that from Freddie Couples. A little uncomfortable. Absolutely. And then I was I was listening to Jim Vance and trying unbelievable. to... Jim, Jim Nance, rather. And trying to... <laughs> trying to make you proud, guys. Was that okay? <laughs> and trying to figure out whether he was really... And I'm pretty sure that he had a pause that indicated he was crying. Absolutely. Wow. Absolutely. Right. Crying during a golf. I'm Jim Nance. <laughs> Hello. We'll be back next week. Wow. <laughs> Adam. Don. Mike. Mike. Yeah. Radio gods. Howdy. Yo, I, I got to know, uh, you know, I, I love the show. I've been listening to you guys for like six, six, seven years now. Why are we talking about NASCAR, man, and golf? Uh, uh, golf, we don't talk about an awful lot, but NASCAR is something, dude. I'm afraid you're just going to have to deal with it. It's happening. Uh, that uh, NASCAR uh, I mean, the is fun. Are good. NASCAR is fun. That, only when the accident's coming on. That's the only time you see highlights. What, um, what sports uh, do you like? Eh? NFL? How about the draft? You guys been talking about the draft at all? Oh. Right, well, uh... I didn't know that. Or... Listen, um... Ask. We uh, we did spend the first uh, half hour of the show today talking about the draft. Okay, okay. See, I'm up. I can go off work. Lots Hello. of different sports centers, lots of different people. Ask. What do you think, Ask? So, so I think there's more 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 people that are interested in talking about maybe the NFL or. Uh, listen, Ask. When when the NFL season comes. We do talk a lot more about uh, the NFL ass, but in the off season, NASCAR gets the best ratings of any sport on TV. Ass. <laughs> do you understand that ass? Yes, I do. Let me ask you a question then. Um, yes, ass. Being from you know, DC, I know that you uh, you you are uh, I know you're a Packers fan. Yes, ass. Uh, you know, okay, I'm a Redskins fan. How do you think they did the job? Uh, is this another boring football question? Yeah, yeah goodbye, ass. <laughs> goodbye. There he goes. That was the sound of us just running him over. Why don't you talk about what I like? Yeah, I was uh, <laughs> actually, to close out this little NASCAR discussion. Yes. I was having a discussion with uh, Charles Broyhill before the show today, mm -hmm. saying, I'd like to know how much it would cost. And obviously this company would never pay for it. Mm -hmm. And let's say you and I put some cake together. I'm looking at these cars where, for instance, you see the, the Tony Stewart car. Mm -hmm. And it's all, it, it's Home Depot all over the thing. Yeah, they got other sponsors. And then on the, on the back now where you got the camera, mm -hmm. he's got Old Spice. Right. But on the side, he's got like <laughs> all kinds of other little stuff. Mm -hmm. If we were to get a driver that had half a chance of winning, yep. how much would it cost us to buy right? A, a box? Free. How could it be free? Because of what we do for a living. Well, then someone should call one of these NASCAR dudes and tell them, we'll talk about them every week on the air. Mm -hmm. If they give us a box on their car. If you went to a NASCAR team and said you would get six million people a week to look at a particular driver because uh, we talked about him on the air, I think that that would be a fine arrangement. Mm -hmm. I could be wrong, but I would think that would be fine. Well, they might want some money, though, I think. Mm -hmm. I also think it's funny that every time I watch the Cyrus radio car mm -hmm. crashes. <laughs> you know, oh, that's the Cirrus uh, satellite that, radio? Yeah, yeah. Cirrus, yeah. yeah. That, that, that's yeah. Uh, <laughs> the satellite radio that's supposed to be taking over our yeah. Cyrus. <laughs> That's what they call it in the south. You went into the wall again. It's supposed to be taking over our jobs, and it's just mm -hmm. it's not happening. Mm -hmm. No. It's not happening. <laughs> Stockholders around the country very concerned. No, okay. and uh, I was reading an ad. XM is forced now, and they're an advertiser with us, and I don't care because I said from day one it's ridiculous to run ads for XM uh, on a commercial radio station. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I, I get literature from XM all the time because they, they, cause I have a GM car. Right. It's now standard mm -hmm. in a GM car. Well, it's standard, but you got to pay whatever it is a month. You got to pay to have it installed, then you got to pay whatever it is a month. Subscription. Yeah. And the deal is now that the literature they're sending, apparently there was a bit of backlash because people assume if you get an XM radio or Cirrus or whatever it's called, that you just get music or talk or whatever you want. Mm -hmm. But 
they now send you out a list of the 80 or some channels they have. And it's like cable TV, most of them worthless. But I found it very interesting that they put a red dot next to the channels that are commercial free. Mm -hmm. And I counted seven. Wow. Out of? Out of about 80. So what do you have? You have... They're doing what we do. It's called radio. Yeah. But what we do, you get for free. Yeah. Right. And the ones that are commercial free mm -hmm. are the ones that I could never in a, in a million years imagine myself listening to. Uh, the Folk Channel. <laughs> Correct. Yeah. Enjoy the Mandolin Channel. <laughs> yes. What happened? I don't think so. <laughs> Hello. John and Mike Show. Radio Gods. Howdy. Don't you think NASCAR is well gay? <laughs> no, the Daytona 500 is gay. No, I don't. NASCAR is gay. I don't think it's gay. I think it might be a little gay. Why? I mean, why do you watch it? Because there's nothing else on. There's no football on. I'll I'm tell you. Say, what about a really? gay? What about... Let me tell you. Let me tell you why. I what about what? I'm going to talk about something that I noticed in the winner's circle. There's this one particular babe, I think she like goes from race to race, and I think she gets into the jumpsuit of the particular team that wins, and she stands in back she's of the door, right. and she looks so hot. <laughs> and she's at every race. Hmm. And, and listen, I watch arena football, and so I'll do you one better. I TiVo NFL Europe games to watch them. Now that's gay. But on a Sunday <laughs> afternoon... <laughs> You know, the way Fox does it, it's almost like watching football, except it's cars. They got so much guys. They got, they got so much junk on the screen right. all the time, and whenever there's a wreck, they're all over it. Well, and when the, the wrecks, but it is also very similar to the NBA in that a lot of times with NASCAR, you tune them for the last 15 minutes. And you can see the real fun because it really does come down to the wire. And even if you're not having a real head-to-head -head race for first, you get the guys battling for second. And I like it if you get a restart in the last 15 laps. And then it's a sprint. Then anybody can win. Mm -hmm. and then anybody then, can win. And they're out there trying to kill each other. <laughs> That's what makes it good. Hello. Because God needed another driver. Hello, Don and Mike. Just stay away from Jimmy Johnson. And <laughs> hey, Jimmy Johnson, man, he is in trouble. So, yes, to answer your question, I like NASCAR. I also like Will and Grace. <laughs> <laughs> and you also, sub you TiVo queer as folk. Okay, now you're outing me. <laughs> Sorry, you told me you liked it this week. There was one great thing I'll tell you, and we have to break, during the NBA game yesterday. Right. I'm not sure which game it was, and we have to get a tape of it, where some broad uh, just butchered. The national anthem. Oh, really? Oh. When she came to the to the last part with the and the rockets red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof to that that our flag was still there. Oh, was taken. She, and someone's got to call and tell us. She just <laughs> she, she lyric wise or no, or no, melody wise. Uh, uh, lyric wise, hmm. she effed up the words, oh, and man. she had wow. a former player player play her player. <laughs> That was standing behind her, who was actually. We have a tape of it. Oh, we no, this Rob, this is not her. Okay, can you feel? Ladies and gentlemen, Dennis Murphy. One of the worst versions of the national anthem you'll ever hear. So we'll play it coming out of the break, and maybe somebody. Oh, you got to play the part where he screws up. But Mike, we got to break first. Oh. If we don't break now, we're gonna get to that point where at the end of the show we have no time for the news. Okay. So we'll play it coming out of the commercial. I just think that's a little gay. We'll be right back. <laughs> this is the Don and Mike Show. Okay, can you see by the gong going on? Oh, so quick. 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 Oh, 
Oh, okay. Okay, hold on, hold on. Oh, okay, hold on. Oh, no, he's not. Dennis, you have the right words? Look at this. Yeah, I, I just asked him, Joe. Okay, hold on. Hold on. Hold on, we're going to do it. Show Mike and Don the It Like I Feel Because Just Backwards Won This Read. I'll Think I Hey. Thank you, Dude Walker. Uh, Mike, uh, the chick you're talking about is Brandy DeYoung. Yeah, she's Miss I Miss Winston. Right. <laughs> and uh, she's the girl that uh, slips into the jumpsuit after the uh, NASCAR dudes win. She is fetching. Miss Winston. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. There she is. That's right. Uh, it's a cigarette, folks. <laughs> Hello there, Don and Mike show. Hey, good. Hello, like a cigarette should. Hey, Ben and Mike. Hey, hi. Hey, about that uh, chick that murdered the uh, national anthem? Yes, sir. It was a 13-year-old girl. Apparently, she won a contest, and she had never sung in front of a uh, crowd before. Ooh. She was awful. Who was the player that was helping her? Uh, it was actually the head coach of the Portland Trailblazers. Ah, well, it was, she was awful. I mean, it, it was funny, but it was awful. Dennis screwed, yeah. the, Dennis screwed the album up twice. For us. Didn't we do <laughs> the anthem? Th the yeah. anthem. Yes, he did. And the second one is when he just trailed off, yeah. which is my favorite part. <laughs> Hello there, uh, Don and Mike show. Do we have hey. that? Yeah, we're looking for the other one. Okay. Hello? Hey. Hey. Hey, how you doing? Say Seuss, man. How you guys doing today? Okay. Hey, Jesus. <laughs> Same guys from before. Hey, I got a question for y'all today. Yeah. Um, why is it in D.C. your station's coming in really crappy today? It sounds like it's wavy. Maybe it's not just today. Maybe it's every day because this station has a really crappy signal. Oh, this is the first time I've ever heard that do that. Hmm. You know, I... First I had time you've ever heard Dad do that? I had a problem with it today. Hmm. I, and I've never had a problem with it in my life. I had you a never have a problem with Dad before? I never had a problem with Dad no, before. It, it just, it was, it was... <laughs> and, and, and I don't know what's going on. Are they, they doing, doing anything? I don't know. I don't know. Um, <laughs> maybe it's, the, you know what, Mike, maybe it's the pressure. Maybe it's the, and I don't mean like barometric pressure. You mean the real pressure. Maybe it's the pressure. Um, you see, tomorrow... The people that run our radio station and all of the other radio stations owned by Infinity in Washington, mm -hmm. tomorrow they're going up to New York to get yelled at by the boss. Ooh. Yeah, it's a nervous place around here. He's sure. back. Mm -hmm. And if you want to know how ridiculous this management team is that we're working for, right now as we speak, mm -hmm. they're at a meeting to prepare for their meeting tomorrow. Good idea. Like, if if Mel says this, you say this. <laughs> yeah, like you'd uh, almost prepare a witness for court. <laughs> yes, absolutely. That's what similar you, kind of thing. Because they yeah, are absolutely... Similar kind of <laughs> they are absolutely petrified of, of the fact... I alluded to this earlier in the show, that there are changes at the top in our company in Infinity Broadcasting, and... Uh, these guys are are coming and going, and it's it's amazing that so many changes were made so quickly, and now those changes seem to be being changed themselves. Mm -hmm. They are equally quickly, Man. maybe actually a lot quicker. Yeah. A lot of people are wearing multicolored underpants <laughs> this week yeah. who work for Infinity Broadcasting. Fortunately, none of them in this room yeah. or on this side of the radio business. No, no, we uh we are, we're very happy that uh, all the guys that we're out of that fray. All the guys and girls that wear suits though and sensible business uh, skirts to work, mm -hmm. trust me. They haven't had a solid bowel movement <laughs> since these meetings were announced last week. Wow. Exactly. And as a matter of fact, it, it it always comes back to bite you in the ass. Mm -hmm. At one point last week, someone whose name won't be mentioned. Yes. Do we have to tape his name though? I believe we do. If we... I don't want to mention his name, uh -huh. but there's someone who we work with very closely. Uh, very nice. This is uh, well, yeah. Acting, Acting general, general manager, manager Alan Linewall. Oh, yeah. He was he was uh, he was in the office and he was saying, <laughs> hey. Well, I hear that the uh, the people from New York and Philly and Chicago 
are all being called up to New York to be reamed out by Mel. Ha <laughs> ha. Well, that'll be, that's just what they need. That's good. That's, you know, this company's getting back in line. This is, that's what they need. Mm -hmm. Good for them. Right. They're going to go up there and get their asses chewed out. Ha! Boy, am I glad I'm not them. Right. And then it was just uh, 24 hours later. Acting uh, General uh, Manager uh, Alan Linewand. That he sheepishly came and said to me, um, he's part of that meeting. He's being called in as well. Wow. And the D.C. meeting is tomorrow. Mm. And they're having a strategy. Do you think they're playing Stratego, Stratego right Stratego. now? Should be. Stratego over at WARW. I, I bet they're calling Alan up there just to congratulate him. Yeah. <laughs> you love Alan. I do. Oh, my God. <laughs> What's the business line at WARW? Yeah, Would you look it up for me, sure. somebody? Absolutely. I'd like to call over there just to ask how the strategy meeting is going. The strategy meeting in advance of the big meeting. Yeah. They're having a meeting mm -hmm. to talk about what they're going to be doing at the meeting tomorrow when the big boss yells. You go in there, there are like empty booze bottles everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. I think I've done a very good job, a very acceptable job. <laughs> oh, Mike, here's the uh, tape you were looking for of Dennis Murphy with ah, the National Anthem. Good, my favorite. Second chance. Yes. Father He was prepared this time, we thought. At a different event, second chance, right. Ah. Some of the best. Uh, so, um, <laughs> okay. They're having this meeting over there that I know we're not supposed to talk about, but we'll call them. Anyway. Were you instructed? No, I wasn't told, but I just think it's just general mm -hmm. good business not to talk about this yes, it would be. on the radio. Um, <laughs> right. I will tell you uh, well, the other topics I'd love to talk about. Uh, here's something that I was sworn to secrecy last night with my brother. And eventually, he'll come on the radio and tell everybody. But my absolutely screwed up, moronic, psychotic, adopted parents are at it again with him. Oh, no. And I can't tell you exactly what they're doing to him now. They're getting involved in his life again? But, yeah, they're oh. just trying to F up his life. Wow. And it's really, it's just... It's so sad, because you heard my brother on the radio, and, and even if you've only heard him once or twice, you know he's a good guy. Yeah. He's got a good heart. I mean, he's not, he's not a rocket scientist, and neither am I. Uh, I've been very lucky. He's not been so lucky, but he's taken, really, he's taken that old thing. He's taken, he's taken lemons, he's making lemonade. Yeah. Whatever that dumb saying is, he does it. He's, he's had a lot of bad breaks, and a lot of them are his fault. And your 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 folks are kind of afraid to screw with you, but they're they're taking that out on him a little bit. Yeah, so they started up with him again, and maybe at some point he'll uh, he'll call and want to talk about it. He was calling me last night, and I was getting so pissed. Yeah. Uh, and eventually, I went to Frieda. I was telling Frieda, and Frieda said, "Well, you, you just got to let it go." And I said, "Well, I want to I want to do something about it. I want to be proactive." Uh, so I, I guess all I'm going to say, because I know that they listen and that they have people who listen. Mm -hmm. Sam, Fran, you want to F with anybody? F with me. Try effing with me. You tried it before. Mm -hmm. But stop effing with Jimmy. Jimmy, really, just leave him alone. 
Just let him live his life. Really. Come on. Either that, and I know this will sound cruel, and if you're a new listener, too bad. Then do us both a favor and die. And I don't mean that in a kidding way. I mean that in a serious way. Because when anybody asks me what the deal is with my parents, I don't bother going through the exercise of telling them how effed up and psychotic you are. I tell people, my parents are dead. And for all I know, my real parents are dead. But... It is much easier to tell people that my adoptive parents are dead than to tell people the story of how manipulating, two-faced, absolutely cruel, dishonest, and heartbreaking, you two pathetic pieces of dung are. So I know if you're not listening today, one of your spies from the D.C. area is listening. I pray for your death. And I'm not saying that as a joke. The day you die, I will be a happier person. Because I'll know that I won't have to get a phone call from my brother who's got enough going against him already. Saying that you guys, you know, listen, live in retirement. Live down in Florida and just, you know, watch the sunset until you check out. But stop effing with my brother. It's not a fair fight. You f with me until I finally got to a, part, a, a, a place where I could f back with you. Where I could fight back. He can't fight back. They, just, they do stupid ass stuff. And, I, and, I'm, and I'm, I, I would tell you what it is, but until I get the okay from my brother... Very seriously, I'm, I'm looking at the possibility of being sued by them mm -hmm. for speaking about things that they've done to my brother. Right. But you two are both abominable, ab abominable, ab abominable, bad. And we hate you. We hate you. And you know what's funny is that you two still lie to people and tell them that you have two sons. Tell them that you have two sons... One of them is doing very well. He's in the radio business. He's uh, incredibly successful. And the other one is finding his own way in life. That he's, he's always wanted to drive a truck, and that's what he's doing. And you can, couldn't be prouder of us and how great, how great we are. But pull ass. You're liars. You're freaking liars. Now, I'm sorry they reared their ugly head again. I thought that yeah. was... Uh, no, uh, they, and, and the stuff they're doing with my brother... It, I know they don't deal with you anymore, but I'm sorry that they... I thought they were done with him, too, but yeah. that... No, they're not. a little more fresh. No, they're not. Mm. And I got news for you. Unlike the way I was brought up, in a total culture of lying and deception and the entire family being in on lies and, and everybody keeping secrets from everybody else, my wonderful son who you have seen exactly one time in his 18 years of life, knows absolutely everything about you two. He knows everything. He knows why he only has one set of grandparents. He knows why. So think about that the next time you look yourselves in the mirror. And any of you... And supposed friends of theirs who tape this show and send it down to Florida or whatever you do, F you too. Anonymous a-holes. My brother and I want to be left alone by these people. They're dead to us. They are dead to us. Leave us alone. And for the last time, Sam, Fran... You want to fight with somebody? Come fight with me. Leave my brother alone. And please, die soon. I mean it. Because then I'm not going to have to get these phone calls anymore from my brother saying, do you believe what they're doing to me now? To concentrate on that, to find a nice burial plot and look at it every day. Jesus Christ. Uh, these are two evil people who, in reality, I feel pity for. I feel bad for them. 
that they have so little going on, and all they do is live in a world where they lie to each other about, about the circumstances of their lives. The reason your sons, your adopted sons, are not in your lives are because of the way you treated us, not the other way around. And I have more news for you. If you ever pulled your head out of your ass and attempted to contact me and said, we want to try to make things right before the end, I'd probably be open to that. I'd probably hear you out. But you don't have the balls for that. You got the balls to try to screw with my brother. Stop it! Excuse me, that was a personal message from me to my adoptive parents. You think that'll give to them? Oh! They got, Guarante a, they got a mole up here? Guarantee. Mm. Good. I get Good. it. I hope it does. Well said. I guarantee. We have to, we have to break. Sorry. And I'm sorry to be so cryptic, but they're, they're just effing with my brother. Hey, you know, for and those, it drives me nuts. I think for anybody that's listened to the show for a long time, and for those of us who know you personally, mm -hmm. you know, there's nothing cryptic about it, and we understand you and we support you with that. Absolutely. And, uh, if this is the message, uh, if this is the way you get the message to them, I think that uh, you got to do what you got to do. It's the only way I can. Yeah, I it's know the it. only way. I know it is, and that's uh, and that's that's a good thing. Because I've tried to call them, and there's you know I tried to call a couple of years ago, and there's just no there's no getting through. No, I mean it's 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 like when someone creates their own reality and then just decides that that, that nothing is going to tear it down. Yeah. It's it's, it's, well, you it's fight, impenetrable. You want to fight with one of the adopted sons of and, and 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 you know they say things to people like to, to other family members that they don't think are going to get back to my brother and I but people are the way that they are. They yeah. say things like your mom and dad have said that you're not really their sons anyway. You know, that that's why you guys turned out the way you turned out, because you're not really their sons. That's fine. That's fine. We turned out whatever way we turned out. We're crappy people. You're crappy people. Let's leave it at that. But you two despicable bottom of the barrel waiting for the next train to hell cretins can't let it go. If you want to fight with somebody, if you want to try to F up somebody's life, try me. Try me, because I'm loaded for bear. I'm loaded for bear. I don't care about the headlines. Disc jockey sues parents. Disc jockey takes parents to court. I don't care. But don't F with my brother. You know, he's got enough problems... He doesn't need you doing what you're doing to him. So stop it. Stop it! And you suck. You suck. But even, even having said that, if you called me, I would still see you. And I maintain that the biggest mistake that you have made in, in all of your life with me is the fact that you have only seen my son once. And that is not my choice, that was your choice. That you've not seen what a great kid is a part of... He's a part of your life, like it or not. I don't care if I was adopted by you or not. He is your grandson. And even though I was adopted, and even though you sent back all those boxes of baby pictures of me and uh, pictures of me getting my high school football letter and, and, and pictures of me in my Batman suit when I was a kid. I have, I have an equal number of boxes of pictures of my kid where, guess what? He looks exactly like me. So I would think that maybe you'd be slightly interested in knowing how this kid turned out. And my brother, with, his, with an equal amount of faults as I have, has a wonderful daughter who you don't know either. And he's not shut the door on that either. So you want to do something? 
Why don't you try meeting your grandchildren? Instead of trying to F with your son's lives. And you f with me until I got to a position where you couldn't f with me anymore. Where you called my wife and you said threatening things to my wife. That you had big gigantic secrets that you were going to tell my wife that would ruin our marriage. Well, she called your bluff because I, I, I love my wife because she's got balls. She stood up to you. And then I had to send you a court order. I had to hire an attorney to send you a court order to tell you to stay the F out of my life. But still, you send me anonymous letters. But you're so stupid when you send me anonymous hate letters. It's your handwriting and the postmark of the city that you live in. You're pretty stupid. But you finally stopped it with me because I hired an attorney to send you a letter to say, leave him alone. But don't you dare start this with my brother. All he wants is to get on with his life. That's all he wants. And he's not going to have peace until you either leave him alone or die. So do one of the two things. Either die or leave him alone. See, and I can get on the radio and kid it and have a good time and, and make, make it like it's light and it's funny. But it's not, because last night he was crying, and last night I was crying. And you are cruel and heartless people. And just leave my brother alone. Samuel, Francis, liars, scum of the earth. <clears throat> I spit on you. But at the same time, if you ever want to meet my kid, let me know. They could be surprised that someone as effed up as me, and I won't use you as the total excuse for me being effed up, but God knows you two had a lot to do with it. It's pretty amazing that my kid's turned out as great as he's turned out. Being as the only manual that I had for raising a kid was the way that I was raised. With you two losers. And I'd say the same for my son, for my, my brother's daughter. It just, it just for the grace of God that I'm in the position I'm in, that I'm able to fight you financially. He can't. So leave him alone. And that's all. Sorry I wasted your time. Everybody. Not a waste. That was selfish of me, but that's the only way that I can get this message out to these two people who are still effing with my brother. Oh, damn, last night I was about ready to go through the roof. You know, I, every time I hear you uh, talk about your, your parents, I just, you know, it's... I just can't imagine how that must feel. That's got to be extraordinarily difficult uh, to live with that e each and every day. And uh, I know this is the way you do this because this is the only way that they're going to get a message from you because you've tried to contact them. They don't, you know, you don't have that relationship. They're dead to you right now. And You know what? I'm not being a martyr here. I mean, i got a great life and I have no complaints. No, I know. It's tough. It's, but it's, you know, you do this because that's the way you get a message. And Just you don't stand F up for your brother. Don't F with my brother. Because with all the crap that you guys have gone through, you forged a good relationship with your brother, yeah. and you two are as different as night and day, and uh, it's great that you've been able to do that. And Don't stand in his way of getting, uh, 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 of getting a little piece of the pie. Don't stand. If he shows the initiative to try to do something, don't step in and try to take that away from him. Just leave him alone. Like you leave me alone. And at the same time, I'll contradict myself and say... No, I think anybody that's been in that situation understands exactly what you know, you're saying. If you ever want to see what a great grandson you have or what a great granddaughter you have, our doors are open. You know, you can only hope that with time, perhaps, who knows. And I don't want to take you know. any calls from people saying, are you sure this is how you feel? 
Anybody that's listened to the show, you have elaborated on, I'm not on the go, circumstances, and I don't think you need to go to I'm not going to go into it. Yes, it's how I feel. I wish they were dead. And I'll tell you why I wish they were dead. I wish they were dead because they still F with my brother all the time. All the time. And for the last 15 years, we would have never had one problem with these people. I'll give you a nutshell. Robbie, give me 30 seconds. You ready? Give me a nutshell. Ready? Go. Go. We were adopted. We found out about it. We asked. We asked the right way. We asked the Oprah way. We said, we love you as our parents. We don't want to find our natural parents and abandon you for them. But... Our entire lives have been a lie, so we'd like to know the circumstances of us being adopted. Time. And their answer was to send all of my belongings to me in a box. And they did the same thing to my brother. And then just because they can't let it go, they do stuff to try to F with him and F with me. And it's just wrong. So yes... As though the best thing for you to have done would have been to not care about it and just just let it lie and just put it away, which you can't do. And anybody that well, I'm is not. familiar with that situation knows you can't let that lie. I'm not. And and I love my brother, and I don't care how I don't care that he's my adopted brother. Yeah, it's meaningless. He's my brother, and I love him, and I bust his balls on the radio, but I love him, and you are screwing with somebody I love. So you better stop it. Because I will squash you like a grape. That I swear. And that's it. Sorry that uh, I didn't mean uh, I didn't mean this break to go this way. That came out of nowhere. No, Garrett, you're right. So I would just thank you. You didn't expect you to be doing that. No, I didn't. Sorry, everybody. Uh, we got a break. Hope the message was delivered. I sure yeah. think it was. Oh, I know. You know, all the people. Hey, how you doing, Mrs. Wilson? Incidentally, want to say hi to her. One of the moles who I know tape, knows tapes the show and sends it down to Florida. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's another thing. Don't think I don't know who the people are that are doing this. Okay, don't think that I don't know that six years ago when I got busted for pot, don't think that I don't know the person in Washington, D.C., who sent the newspaper clipping down to Florida so that they could send it back to me with a letter saying, you were never our son. We are not proud of you. Don't think that I don't know who sent them that item out of the newspaper in the first place. You're all just lying to yourselves. But I can take it. Just don't F with my brother. And if you want to take this up legally, you know my address. You know, I want to just say one thing to you about this break and about what you said. Yeah. Thanks for playing the Dennis Murphy National Anthem. You're today. welcome, Mike. I appreciate that. All right. I apologize, everybody. No, that, came, no. that came out of nowhere. Doesn't belong on this show, but it's unfortunately the only way I can communicate with those two cretins. Don, I, I think since we're talking about honesty right now, and I, yeah. I, I was the one who sent the clipping. <laughs> I'm, I'm real sorry. I figured if time has passed and time heals, please forgive me, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. With you, I'll forgive you. Thank you, man. <laughs> but Mrs. Wilson, what a, what a great alien. Yeah, well, I got it from her. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh. Okay, the old er, uh, uh, right. yeah, the old in and out. Sure. We'll be right back. This is the Don and Mike Show. These pipes are clean. <laughs> and how? The Don and Mike Show. They are the blood and the pus in the comedy zit. Don and Mike. Let me just uh, close up this wound that I opened real quickly. Uh, joining us now from Cheeseland is Jimmy. Hey, dude. Hey, dude. Jimmy! 
So do. anyway, like I was telling you, I, I just got to give them the heads up that I talked about it. Mm -hmm. Although I didn't say anything specific. Yeah. Um, you'll hear it on the replay tomorrow. Oh, okay. On the Madison station. Yeah. Um, <laughs> i just give you a, a, a synopsis. I just said, Sam and Fran are effing with you, and to knock it off. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's all. I didn't get into... That's to the point. Any specifics or anything else. Mm. Okay. Dan, so, you said if you're gonna, you know, if you're gonna f with somebody, f with me. Yeah, f don't with, f with me, not with you. Thank you, I appreciate that. No problem. But I wanted to give you the heads up since we had spoken last night. See, what I did was I gave him advice and then I broke the advice. Mm. I told him last night, let it go. You know, they're dead to us. Ignore it. Don't let them know it's getting to you. And then today, out of nowhere, I started talking about it on the air. <laughs> so. I just had to give it the heads up. That's good. All right, dude. Thank you. All right, so work okay today? Yeah. Early day? What time did you go to work? Uh, 7 o'clock. 7 a. Oh. Yeah, I got good out of three today. All right. All right, good for you. All right. Yeah. All right, well, let me know. Okay. Let me know if you hear anything. Oh, I will. Because yeah, you'll, um, be you'll be the second to know. <laughs> <laughs> because I did mention that I know that they have spies out here in D.C. Yeah. Who taped the show. Oh, they probably got spies out here, too. You know, the, uh, the other family members. Oh, it's like, I keep forgetting that we're on in Wisconsin, too. Right. Yeah. That, it, that it might not just be the lady who used to be our babysitter who's ratting, uh, ratting us out. Yeah. It might be someone up there. All right, bud. Have a good one. All right, I will. I'll see you later. All right, bye. All right, bye. Take care, Jim. Bye. Huh? bye. Okay. Because the lady used to be your, you mentioned a missus and you mentioned a name. Is there a mister in that? Because uh, he's evil. I've seen the movies. Oh, <laughs> oh have you read the comic strips? Yeah, yeah. I've read the comic yeah. strips. And all the he doesn't really even like kids. No. Um, <laughs> now, listen. I thought he was just a volleyball. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> hey, Rob. Um, let me change the topic here for a second. Um Two quick questions, and then I want to call and see how this strategy meeting is going. Anybody going to watch Mr. Personality tonight besides yeah, I, me? Yeah, uh, I'm going to watch it on your recommendation, and uh, I actually uh, programmed my little TiVo unit for it last night. Buzz? Yeah, I'll watch it tonight. Robbie? Try to stop me. And you know, the promo was pretty attractive because they got a guy that rips his mask off tonight. And? Uh, which is, I, I thought was pretty cool. I was reading in the uh, Entertainment This Week magazine... Uh, excuse me, a little birthday, but very small. <laughs> An article with a guy who I guess is the. I was reading in a magazine. The uh, the art the 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 article was uh, about the uh, the ugly guy, ah. the one guy that right. left that is of all of them hideously disfigured, <laughs> and not really, but by the standards of the show, he's the ugly one, mm -hmm. saying that uh, well, he doesn't feel bad because his face is hidden and he has. He has nice teeth. Right, right. And that's pretty much all you can see. Now, he's not as goofy looking in the picture that they had in this magazine. Well, the as one eye that he has is actually artificial. As he is on the <laughs> show. And when he takes the mask off, you will see that he is indeed a cyclops. But anyway, uh, you know, we'll see if the second episode is as good as the first. Okay. I came in and raved about the first. Mm -hmm. Right. We'll see if it happens uh, tonight with the second. Now, uh... Our company, Infinity Broadcasting, is a very, <laughs> bravo, very traumatic situation for our company. Yes. I mean, not only do we have the showdown at WYSP happening Friday from our vantage point, right. but company-wide, yeah, there's a lot of... Uh... There's a lot of unsettled feelings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's uh, uh, guys that... Uh, Nervousness woke, abounds. Guys woke up Thursday morning and thought they were presidents, and, and Friday found out that they were uh, tendering their resignations. It's a very interesting time. Mm -hmm. So, uh, all of the people who work at our radio station, WJFK, and the other Washington-owned Infinity stations, mm -hmm. uh, WPGC, WHFS, WARW, they're all being called up to New York tomorrow where they're going to be yelled at from 4.30 to 6.30 in the afternoon. Now, this is fine because, uh, frankly, the, the guy who's running things is the guy who used to run things. And most people in this company are anxious for things to go back to the way they used to be. Yeah. Um, what is interesting... Not is, in every way. 
Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, you're right about that. Let's, but let's, And I really think that needs to be said. <laughs> but generally speaking... Well, I don't even like generally speaking. Um, if you take certain managers out of the equation, mm -hmm. there was a way that the business was done that made Infinity a rather unique company to work oh, for. Absolutely. Uh, talent always came first, meaning that you know you could be a disc jockey, you could do a show, uh, as long as you didn't do something stupid, like having people have sex in a church, uh, the company would stand behind you. Mm -hmm. right. You know, and, But your part of the deal was you had to get ratings. Right. You get good ratings, company stands behind you. Well, now there's all these other issues that where they, you know, they, for instance, the ratings for our show don't really matter anymore because we just get lumped in now with all the other stations. They don't go to an advertising agency and mm -hmm. say, if you buy a, a commercial on the Don and Mike show, they're number one in men, 25 to 54. They just take our ratings and junk them in with all of the other Infinity-owned stations. And, like, they got this big ball of Play-Doh, and they say, look at how big the Infinity Play-Doh ball is as compared to the Clear Channel Play-Doh ball. I mean, right. I, I hope I'm dumbing this down enough so... You non-radio people get Any what I'm saying. Any time you put it in context with balls, people understand. Mm -hmm. Anyway, it, it's, it's a consolidation issue. Right. Whereas it used to be, all of the Infinity stations, while we were all owned by the same company, we fought against each other for advertising dollars, and it made each station stronger because you didn't have this thing where you think, well, it doesn't matter if we have a good book or not because... We have the numbers of all the other stations. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and you know when you're in a in a market, you're going to have people that are going to do better than others. It's the way it's always going to work, and yeah. uh, you always have the individual competitive nature of radio. That's the way it works. So anyway, tomorrow all of the managers from the Washington area Infinity stations are going to New York <laughs> to meet with Oz, <laughs> and they are scared Sless. Mm. They are as we speak. At another radio station the company owns, having a meeting to prepare for their meeting tomorrow. Because they're really not sure what tomorrow will bring. Yeah. So let's see if we can call okay. Alan to All see right. how the meeting before the meeting is going. Absolutely. Wonderful idea. Well, we'd be glad to hear from you. Well, perhaps they're taking a coffee break. The way we understand it, the meetings could probably go well into the evening. Now, I know they're meeting tomorrow from 4.30 to 6.30 mm -hmm. with Oz. But I find the whole thought that they're having a Alan. meeting. Alan, it's Don and Mike, and you're on the air. Hey, guys. How's the meeting going? How are you, Alan? Uh, yeah, I just left. Hmm. Hey, so the meeting is wrapped up. Yeah, I got a half a day today. How do you like that? So the meeting started. How long was the meeting before the meeting? Can you tell us the total... We we uh, we just got together to talk about some things for uh, an hour and a half or so. Mm -hmm. So you had an hour and a half meeting for a two-hour meeting tomorrow. Yeah, something like that. Okay, now, without getting into any specifics, correct. What is the mindset of your group, meaning the Washington Washington Infinity Broadcasters? What is the mindset going into the meeting with Oz tomorrow? The mindset. A beat. Defensive? Well, you know. I mean, any time you, uh, you have to go visit with uh, Oz. a fearless leader. Oz. Yeah, you know, it's, it's never a, uh, a painless experience for anybody. How many people were scared? Uh, it would be easier to answer how many people weren't. <laughs> <laughs> Who's, whose briefcase will Jay Stevens write in? Uh, actually, Jay will. I don't think Jay's going to be at the meeting. Yeah, Jay will not be at the meeting. Oh, so it's just you managers. You, I mean, just the real managers. Well, it's it's not Jay. <laughs> right, like I said, just the real managers. There you go. There you go. Okay. So, hey, um, hey great job on Sunday, by the way. Uh, I mean, that, I mean, on Saturday, excuse me. <laughs> to say Sunday, what I was at uh, Rob Sons Christian Aid. Alan, uh, baptism. You're, Alan, you're a veteran of some of these meetings with uh, the great and powerful Oz. You worked for the company for a long time. Yes. What is the one mindset you would share with people when you go into a meeting with this uh, individual? What do you What do you do? What's the best thing to do? Well, you know, anything that you would think of preparing, just don't. <laughs> 
Are you gonna pack? Are you gonna pack a, a second pair of underpants? Uh, no, no, I won't. I, I won't. Really? Yeah. But you know, I, you know, we're looking forward to. It. We got a lot of good things to talk about. No, no, right there. That's that's yeah. a lie. You're not looking forward to it. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we thought it was interesting. Yeah, that you got me. We thought it yeah. was interesting that you guys, as as a group, not only are spineless management team at our station but the spineless management team at all of the stations right have gotten together are y'all going up in the same van uh yeah it would be called amtrak there you go very among, good among all of you yeah do you think if you lined all you guys up together you got a spine oh yeah we're we definitely have spines very good uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to you know i think we've got a good story done Ah. <laughs> Let's just keep it at that. Mel won't think so, but you know. Okay. All right, and uh, you you said his name, uh, Al. Here's in my in my thought for you guys, the best possible scenario when you guys go to the train station tomorrow and you make your way up to New York. Jump on the third rail. No, I mean God forbid, but jump on the third rail. He said. That's the best case scenario. Is that somehow there's a mishap. Right. That, you know, there's a train wreck. Yeah, maybe you'll get lucky and that uh, train will, like, uh, plunge into the river. <laughs> it, it'll only uh, postpone the inevitable. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, ha have any other uh, executives with this company been uh, fired, excuse me, tendered their resignations today? Uh, I have not heard any, no. I would... No, I have not heard anything else. All right. Well, thanks for the update. These are interesting times. Yes. Uh, it's a great time. Good luck. Good luck, hey. Alan. We're behind you until the next guy to, as your job. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. No, I mean that. We're behind you, Alan. Good luck hey. with everything. We know it's stressful. I appreciate it. Hey, Alan? Yes. Uh, this is Rob. Uh, Rob uh, Spiewak is, wants to say something. I don't know. Alan normally doesn't respond. Ooh. Well, go ahead. Go ahead, Rob. Have fun. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, Mike, did you say something? Uh, no, it, was, it was Rob, Alan. Right, we bye understand. Bye. Uh, yeah, and good luck. Hey, thanks. Bye. Thanks, Alan. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. He's fun, isn't he? There's <laughs> all those saps sitting around a room today. Oh. Sitting in a conference room, all those guys. Now, here's the deal. <laughs> don't panic. <laughs> Whatever you do, don't panic. <laughs> We've got a break. We'll be right back. This is the Don and Mike Show. I told you guys, don't overload your listeners. One bit per break. Don't cram all that junk together. Use your head. Hey, guys, show a little respect for women. We want women to listen to this station, so cut the locker room talk. When you turn the mic on, think of that ideal Washington woman. You know, intelligent, upscale, like Madonna, you know? Hey, man, why are you always talking about your wife? Who cares if you beat your wife? Everybody beats your wife. Hey, man, we had an agreement. Nine songs an hour, not seven, not eight, nine. You keep up this yap, yap, yap crap, and you'll be back in Chicago driving that trash truck with your earth dog brother. The Don and Mike Show. Even better than a baby carriage full of pornography. The Don and Mike Show. And now listen, uh, tomorrow on the show, we are going to uh, have tickets. With them before you can buy them. To uh, Aerosmith uh, and Kiss. Ooh, man, that's going to be a good show. And uh, we'll do that tomorrow. Uh, plus tomorrow, God, I had so much stuff for today that we didn't get to. Uh, the Radio Underbelly and uh, the Affiliate Roulette. And, yes. Uh, the uh, George Bush uh, Downing for Transvestite. Very good. Uh, Friday, uh, we'll be in Philly now. Uh, how about, you know, I, I screwed up the timing today. With the whole thing about my brother, mm -hmm. and I apologize for that. I'm gonna have to have a short break here to make sure that we have plenty of time for Buzz. Right. Um, the Don and Mike website of the month. Oh, good, wonderful, wonderful. Share it with us. I know these are always so much fun, and people enjoy them, and we get cards and letters. <laughs> now, this might be one that in the past you would have been interested in. Okay. Based on your last romantic situation, uh, it has to do with. Now, I'm, now my ears are pricked up. Well, it says the first the first line of the come on is breaking up is hard to do. Yeah, no more. Uh -huh. Contact the breakup specialists. Ooh. We're gonna have these people on the show very soon. What you do is you go to the website. Right. I'll give you the website after we tell you about it. Yes. Take a moment to fill out the questionnaire. Yes. 
so we may best suit your needs. Mm -hmm. uh, let me see. What they do with this website is take the first difficult step towards freedom for you. Okay, so they, what they do is they help you break up with somebody you don't want to stay with. It's much like uh, Donnie's Naked Cruelty, yeah. except it's done on the Internet. Uh, we will let down your spouse, significant other, business associate, hmm. roommate, or annoying friend. Awesome. With as soft a blow as possible. See, so it's not like Donnie's Naked Cruelty. No, because they'll be nice. You come in with a hammer. Right we tailor our services to accommodate your unique situation. Please contact, and it has the website, for information and pricing. Now, it's not mm, free. Apparently not. So, for instance, it says, take a moment to fill out the questionnaire so we may best suit your needs. Here's my problem. I am a male, female. Right. Well, so you're a male. I'd like to terminate my relationship with my, then it has, girlfriend, mm -hmm. wife, boss, yeah. friend, right. associate. The length of my relationship is... Right. And you put how long that is. Mm -hmm. So they get all the pertinent information. Then you put in your first name, your last name, your phone number, contact email, best time to reach you. And then there's a giant page here for additional comments. Which will help them in their quest. Yes. You give them the backstory, and you submit it. Now, once you submit all of this... They contact you. Yeah, I, I should clarify, though, that if you wanted to, uh, and you're talking about my situation previously, this would have been information that would have best been uh, directed towards my wife. Okay. I, I um, have to be honest. I'm not, well, going, to, I'm not going to sit here and, uh, for the sake of my own ego, rewrite history. No, no, no. <laughs> There's no. really no point in doing that. And, so. and I, was, I was just doing that, to, you know, to give you an out. That, but, uh, yeah, but, you know, I'm not going to do that. But, even, but, but even after she... After she initiated, yes, whatever it is that she did, right, you could have like beaten her to the punch, or you could have just to be just done it just to be spite, just to be spiteful, done that. Oh, okay, I didn't look at it in that in that or, way. You know what? I'll, I'll use myself as an example. I was too busy trying to save it. I'll use myself as an example with uh, with my parents. Mm -hmm. Yes, that would yes. work, of course. So, Although you used an interesting turn of a phrase there that I like to use with my wife, beat her to the punch. Now, Rob, stop that. <laughs> That's you. You know, I can't speak for your situation. It's a different meaning. You just had your kid christened. Stop it. I oh, know. You know what? Besides no these hate. guys, you know who else we have coming on the show? Who? These guys who've written the book, The Complete A Hole's Guide <laughs> to Handling Chicks. <laughs> hey, hey. <laughs> now, there's an interesting book. Hmm. And tomorrow, I've got to just start reading you some of the stuff out of this book. <laughs> Uh, like, for instance, um, you, you, if you want to change the way you meet people, the way you date, money, not giving an S, chicks, decor, mm -hmm. fighting. Fantastic. It is the complete a-hole's guide <laughs> to handling chicks. You know, I, 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 know we, I know we're not the first ones that used it, but to see a-holes, for some reason, on the front of a... Of a beautifully slick published book, mm -hmm. it's it's very very nice. I I feel gratified. Yeah. Uh, congratulations, man, by picking up the complete a hole's guide to handling chicks. You're pages away from understanding how a five dollar date can get you laid. <laughs> how to stop being friends with girls and start getting them in bed. Mm. Where you'll have the best odds of finding a one night stand, and how to get rid of the chick the next morning. Why fat chicks. Always try to keep you from banging their hot friends. Mm -hmm. And how to stop your wife from nagging you into an early grave. Wow, how about that? Well, we'll read part of that tomorrow. I, I, I'm dying to see that. Yeah, huzzah, absolutely. <laughs> they're, they're coming on the show, but before they come on the show, the guys that are running this breakup service are, are coming on the show. So you put your name and all the stuff, and then you, you write what the problem is. Mm -hmm. um, for instance... He, and they sent us some testimonials. I had been dating a girl for over a year, and she started pulling away from me, and I had no idea why. After the relationship ended, I couldn't get any answers from her because she wouldn't talk to me. Your service was there to answer all the questions I had. You spoke to her and made it easier on both of us. I don't know what I would have done without the counseling calls that you had to offer. Wow, so they counsel people 
Here's well, well, wait a minute. No, no. They, they, what, what they did was the guy who had the girl who was nuts, they canceled him and said, she's nuts. Don't we let, listen to the next one. All right. I met what I thought was a sweet girl. We dated a couple of times when I realized she was a complete effing psycho. She would not take any of the hints I gave that I didn't want her around, but with one phone call and a follow-up letter from you, it did the trick, and I never heard from the bitch again. Wow. Here's one from a girl. A girl. I was dating a guy for a few months when I found out he was cheating on me. I didn't know what I was going to do about it, but I came across an article on your website explaining your services. I hired you to remove and deliver all of his belongings to his house and dump him for me. It worked out wonderfully, and I've never had to deal with this a-hole again. <laughs> mm, mm, nothing but praise. Here's another one. After two and a half years, I knew my relationship wasn't going anywhere. We both decided it was best to move on, so I moved out. When I went to get the last of my stuff, she wouldn't let me have it. I tried unsuccessfully for over two weeks to get my stuff, but she wouldn't let me have it. Thank you for getting my stuff and allowing me to move on with my life. Man, I'd love to hear their techniques for doing this. Well, this is interesting. This is why I'm just setting this up as a future guest, because all of these situations, they're going to come on the show, and without using names, they're going to tell us what they did. The emails that they sent oh, fascinating. to these people. Oh, man, I can't. And I'm, I'm very curious about it. It gets to the bottom. Here's another one. Your service doesn't just handle love, you handle everything. I had a friend staying with me for what was supposed to be two weeks and three months, but she wouldn't go. I've tried everything to get her out, and she won't leave. For what it cost to go out for dinner one night, you moved, moved this bitch out of my house in one day. I don't know what I would have done without you. Thanks, Lori. Wow. And then here's another one. Your website was a lifesaver for me. I've been in a destructive relationship for quite some time, and have, having exhausted even legal means to rid myself of the offender, the person would not stay away. One evening at my wit's end, I came upon an article about your service. Contacted you, and within two days, what had taken me months and finances to deal with was resolved. Quickly, easily, and economically, the overwhelming sense of relief was more than worth what you have done for me. The service, and they give the people's names that wrote the letters here, right? Uh, service is a tool to make that special someone know you're serious, you're informed, and you brought into the picture a third-party professional. It can and did, in my case, break a vicious cycle. Mm. Thank you. Now, I'll tell you what, it sounds to me like these must be pretty heavy-duty folks that are uh, using some interesting techniques. I'm, I'm very curious yeah. about this. Now, they offer stuff including a Dear John letter, <laughs> happy ending counseling calls, <laughs> loose ends mediation services, mm. and one they call the last straw. Wow. And all, I, I believe that all of these letters on the, the testimonials, these are people who went to the last straw. Oh, really? So tomorrow what we do... This is interesting. Tomorrow what we do is we're going to get the second part of this, or if it's not tomorrow, whatever we get to this in a couple of days, we'll get the letters mm -hmm. that they sent so you can hear how they dealt with these individual problems. Fascinating. And then eventually we'll get the people from this website on the show and they'll take your problem very cool and, wow. and, and in return for some plugs sure they're going to help some of our listeners with some of their problems yeah and that just doesn't sound just like breakups it sounds like a variety of people that they deal right. with so we've they. got not only them coming on the show but also very soon uh, the, the complete a-holes guide <laughs> to handling chicks sounds like we're beginning to really help people yeah. and that we're going to get into as well uh, tomorrow <laughs> it's time for the news and the comments yeah, buzz. Oh. buzz, 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 a little do re me. I think you're going to like this, Buzz. We've cleaned this up a little bit. Oh, ho. Oh, ho. Remember last week how I just kind of faded and didn't have a real distinct end? All right. 
Oh, oh, that's nice. That's buzz intro. <laughs> in a world where owning a radio was strictly forbidden, one man found a way to bring good news to his people. It was buzz. It's me. He made it up. And listen, I see we have people calling you about this website already. Oh, uh, hey, Leah? Yes. Honey, you gotta wait till tomorrow. <laughs> okay. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Bye bye. Oh, People are into it. Ah, Rob, <laughs> uh, Buzz, what is your lead story today? Today, are there enough reality TV shows to keep a whole network on the air? Who's working for CBS? <laughs> <laughs> it's just right. about. Yeah, stay tuned. Stay tuned. Stay tuned for news and comments. News and coming comments up coming up on the Don and Mike Don Show. Oh, and uh, Buzz, yes. you're going to be getting an email from uh, a friend of mine very soon. Hmm. <laughs> what could it be? I'm Buzz. I'm kidding. I'm kidding, of course. Uh, that was very as professional. <laughs> this is the Don and Mike Show. What's the word from Planet Crackpot? The Don and Mike Show. Helping you to understand comedy. Don and Mike. Well, nothing. I'm looking at tomorrow's show. Mm -hmm. And here's what I got so far. Uh, I know in the first break, we're taking the Wonderland test. Oh, yeah, good. we're going to find out uh, how smart we all are. And if we're smarter, in fact, than NFL fifth hop players. That's the uh, IQ test that all the NFL draftees took. Yeah. So you say. Sounds to me like it's tasting. It's tasting. <laughs> it's testing our lovemaking ability. We're taking it tomorrow and... Uh, you can take it as well. Uh, tomorrow plus, we're giving away cash. Wonderlick. And we're giving away tickets to uh, Aerosmith and Kiss. A-Hole's Guide to Chicks. That's actually what they called me in college. And I think uh, <laughs> Fez from Ron and Fez hey! wants to come on to do a uh, a bit Super. about uh, his marriage being on the same day as Charlie and Lisa's. Brought to you by Five Guys Burgers and Fries. Let me just say, if you've listened to the whole show today, well, you're in luck, because I'm not even going to ask you a question. Oh. Just call right now. Uh, call 100, 101, 102, 100. Uh, call 100 through 105. Wow. We'll all win. All win tickets for Chicago. Chicago! Boston, Peter Gabriel at Nissan Pavilion. Tickets on sale now at Ticketmaster and NissanPavilion.com. That is a good prize. Yeah. That is an ex. That is an exquisite prize. Summer of music. So call now and uh, win some stuff. A uh, buzz brought to you by Vera Max. All oh, right. Did you say summer? I of said music? it's a summer of music. You're winning. Good or um, good music. Vera Max. Yeah. <laughs> All right. It's your pleasure. <laughs> See, you don't know. I'm here to help. No, no, it's not you. <laughs> Come on. It's him. He's doing What did I do now? <laughs> there it is. You know what you're doing. Uh, Buzz brought to you by Viramax. <laughs> Someone called for a doctor? Clinically tested. Viramax works. Get it at Rite Aid, GNC, and other select retailers. Try it today. Viramax. One AAA try. VMAX. Hi, Buzz. Hi, Don and Mike. One of the founders of E! Entertainment Television, along with a couple of former reality show contestants, is starting a new cable network dedicated entirely to reality programming. Hey, there's a real innovator. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, using money that comes from, among other places, reality show winners, they plan to start the network with about 50% original programming. Oh, God. News and gossip <laughs> shows. It's hard Well, possibly. News and gossip shows about reality programming and some uh, making of shows. Oh, news and gossip shows about reality shows. Plus, Man, I the making of. Fail! Fail! <laughs> Fail! That's a safe bet. Sounds Fail. like a great new radio format. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Blink 102.7. <laughs> the rest of the schedule will be filled with new and reruns reality program. Fred Rerun Barry? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Advertisers are skeptical. They have been all along, actually. They haven't been spending as much on TV's reality shows as they do for traditional comedies and dramas. Hey, somebody better tell Joe we're doing a contest. Because I see all the lines ringing and nobody's answering the phones. Joe is very busy. Have you seen him today? He looks like a 
Joe. Venice Beach homeless man. <laughs> and, uh, he looks very close to that picture of Nick Nolte. Yeah. Nick Nolte was today, pulled over for drunk driving. He has the California homeless look today. Uh, we don't watch in our home, we don't watch Survivor yeah. anymore. Yeah, no. Yeah, I know a lot of you guys do, but, but we, uh, Rob, thank you. Um, last night, uh, Frida and I were watching, uh, and I, it pains me to say this, uh, hey. Hallmark Hall of Fame. Oh. Painted House. The, uh, oh, John Grisham. Yeah. The, gra the, the John Grisham book. Right. You didn't watch Eloise at the uh, Plaza with Jeffrey Tambor? <laughs> Hey, now. No, I did not. <laughs> well, I, of course, you have two young daughters. They dug it. Well, <laughs> I read the John Grisham book like I read all John Grisham books. So we were looking forward to seeing this adaptation. Normally, his books go right to the big screen, right? They don't go to TV. So about halfway through this thing, which was uh, so so, <laughs> did you stick with it long enough to uh, see the part where he paints the ceiling? <laughs> <laughs> that's in my life story, man. Oh, uh, that's correct. Don't you remember that? Yeah, I do. In Detroit. Mm -hmm. I do. I had a girl. Paint the ceiling. Stuck I out. had a girl that just wouldn't give it up. Right. Mm -hmm. And I had to go in the bathroom. I understand him. Kaboom. Pow. Right. Uh, it wasn't even a drop ceiling. <laughs> it wasn't. It was a standard uh, bathroom ceiling at a townhouse. Absolutely. Wow. Cathedral. But the deal is, uh, we're watching this and they're saying... They're promoing the upcoming Survivor. Uh -huh. And I said to Frida last night, this is a sign to me of how desperate they are and, in my opinion, how bad Survivor is. They, they said, not since Richard Hatch. No. And they got a picture of naked Richard Hatch walking around. <laughs> Has there been anybody as bad as dun, 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 dun? Bob or Rob. It's Rob. What, Rob. Rob, uh. whatever the guy's name is. <laughs> and they were saying... If you've not seen Survivor since Richard Hatch, watch this week. Oh, really? Yeah, so that was a... So I just kind of shamelessly uh, trying to get people to tune in to see maybe some gratuitous nudity. Yeah, or, or no, not not the nudity so much, but the fact that he was a jerk. Right. They've had, the, they've had uh, this season on Survivor, much more gratuitous nudity. Uh, nudity uh, right here. Scenes of uh, girls taking off their tops and yeah. washing their boobs. Mm -hmm. Of course, it's all pixelated. <laughs> right. But... To think that they've had to now go back to the well so far as to say, if you liked right. what a two-faced, conniving a-hole Richard Hatch was... Well, didn't a lot of people say after the first one that really, mm -hmm. you know, that they'd be lucky to get a second one out? You know, I mean, and, and they've really milked it as far as they can. Did you also... Maybe that's what they have to do. They have to milk it. Mm -hmm. Did you all stick with Richard Hatch? Mm -hmm. Did you stick oh. with the second one? I'm trying to remember when I bailed. I think I bailed halfway. The, the second, second one was the lady with the uh, way Tina. down upon the Swanee, right? Yeah, the and the guy who fell was, into the fire. Right. Uh, the second one was Tina, yeah. I think, yeah. the lady from Texas with the boob job. Stayed with us through that one. It was the third one where they lost me, where I just said, A lot of people. Uh, I don't care anymore. Yeah. Are they going to do another one about the Amazing Race, the white people stuff? <laughs> I don't know, but they are doing Big Brother Four. Uh, who watches that? <laughs> hey, they got they got seven nights a week to fill. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, you know, I wish they, you're going to see the pendulum go back. You're going to see some uh, some non-reality stuff and good. You know, really, I, I'm just hoping more John Ritter. Yeah, oh, it'll happen. You know, uh, for the sweeps, NBC's uh, doing a behind the scenes three's company where they have a guy who plays John Ritter and a guy who plays I've Suzanne Summers. Seen the promos for that, and it indicated uh, it indicates to me the real problem was with Suzanne Summers. Oh, yeah, it's true. Shocker. It's absolutely true. You know, he was fine. You know, <laughs> what would he bitch about? <laughs> I mean, he was like a you know a neutered dog. <laughs> Funny. Jack Tripper. Funny man. Yeah. The new documentary about J-Lo is not called Behind the Music. It's called Behind the Behind. It comes from England. And unlike the Michael Jackson specials we've seen, this one pulls no punches. In fact, one account calls it devastating. The producers talk to J-Lo's former friends and acquaintances from the Bronx. They say she's ruthlessly ambitious and has forgotten her humble beginnings. The word is if the special gets good ratings in England, it'll probably also air here. Well, you know, and I, I feel guilty that I'm curious about that. Sure. And, and I think it's because of the whole J-Lo, Ben Affleck. Mm -hmm. Aren't you sick of them? I'm sick of them. Yeah, but, I'm you not know what? so sick of them that I don't want to see them be torn down. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead, get married. Yeah. Uh, break up, divorce, do it, just do it. Get it over with. And your comment about Ed Burns being uh, Ben Affleck with talent, I think, is uh, <laughs> is is dead 
on, and I hope he makes a lot more movies. You know, that Cusack movie was number one this week. Yes, it was, yes. And it was quite a weekend for celebrities and cops. Saturday, the woman who plays Rosario the Maid on NBC's Will and Grace was arrested in West L.A. on felony shoplifting charges. Shelley Morrison was first nabbed by security at the Robinson's May store. Police later released her on $20,000 bail. She'll be back in court May what? 14th. I, what I, don't, I don't watch the show, is she? Yeah. Okay, I didn't. Rosario. Rosario, yes. What and is it with these celebrities that shoplift? I don't know. Comedian Jamie Foxx and his sister were arrested early Saturday morning at a New Orleans casino. Uh, reports say they refused to show identification, refused to leave the casino, and... What? <laughs> and then fought with police. I don't think so. And then fought with police officers who were called to escort them out. He's out on a nineteen hundred dollar bond. That happened at that Harris in New Orleans, boys. Yep. Yeah, that's right. Bad Harris. news. I mm -hmm. wonder if Trip Tran saw it go down. <laughs> that's, that's the casino where we were lucky to break even. Yes. Right? Yes. It did happen in Harris. Fox was in New Orleans to make a movie. His people have no comment on that. That's Jamie Fox. Right? Jamie Fox. The guy that correct. was in uh, Any Given Sunday. Exactly. Same right. guy. Not as nice as his sister. Vivica? Samantha. <laughs> Red. <laughs> and Is she dead? No, Red Fox. Oh, Red, and Red Fox. Fox. Oh, okay. And actor Robert Conrad will be back in court on May 6th on his felony DUI charges. I dare you. Uh, Bomber Bob, Bob Conrad, oh, Bob Dorn will be in a bad nap. His car hit another head on a month ago, leaving the other driver in serious condition. I'm in serious condition. That guy's just now out of the hospital and back home to finish recovering. The DA's office says Conrad's blood alcohol level was point two two. California's wow. legal limit is point oh eight. Conrad's best known for his roles on, here's the theme. James the, West. The Wild Wild West. Wow. Also on Baba Black Sheep. Man, this is a great theme song right yeah, here. Yeah, it is, really. He also portrayed his friend G. Gordon Liddy in the made-for-TV movie of Liddy's book, Will. Will. Hi, Bob. Hi, <laughs> Phil. Bob. Bob Conrad. Bob, my Lisa, friend. you are on the air. Bob. And it may be time to peel off the bumper stickers that say, My president is Charlton Heston. He's stepping down as head of the National Rifle Association. Oh, uh, I saw this. You saw and, the tape? And I got shamed for laughing. Mm -hmm. But I did. You had to see him. From my cold, dead tree. <laughs> I gotta ask, when men get older, do the toupees stretch or do their heads shrink? <laughs> heads shrink. That's that must be exactly what it is. It is the Beetlejuice effect. It really is. <laughs> you remember in Beetlejuice at the very yeah. end where his head gets so small? That's what's happening to Charlton Heston. Now, I didn't know that Alzheimer's... I, I mean, I know what it is. Right. right. I know what the effects are. Mm -hmm. But you would think... That the guy could come out and could hold the gun up, gun up and say, you know, from my cold dead hands. Right. But it was like a struggle. Yeah. yeah. I don't yeah. Know it affects I, you physically. As I don't know if yeah. it was a struggle to remember from my cold dead hands. Maybe not yet. Mm. But I watched this thing. I didn't see it. Let me tell you about it. I'm watching it and I'm laughing and I'm getting the hairy eyeball mm -hmm. yeah, from hard. across the room like... You're, you're going to hell for laughing at this. All right. I know is that same old toupee made him look like George Harrison in 1965. <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, Heston made his last appearance as president Saturday, shuffling onto a stage too feeble to give a farewell speech. But the all-timer stricken actor was strong enough to raise a rifle over his head and say, from my cold dead hands, which... Don, you are on the air, sir. So it may not be long from now. I mean, I saw him interviewed like a month ago, so it's like rapidly it, it happening. Can, yeah, it can take on quickly. All right. Uh, the 78-year-old has been the voice of the NRA for the past five years. Quoting his predecessor, there are times he isn't as sharp as he would like. We were surprised he was able to attend. The keynote speaker was Florida Governor Jeb Bush. Anyway, I laughed, and, uh, well, I'm just an awful person. <laughs> we are going to break, and uh, we'll be right back. This is the Don and Mike Show. <whistles> Don and Mike. Gosh, I hate to interrupt. It's all been so incredibly fascinating and entertaining and instructive. Really, the time has just flown by. The Don and Mike Show. They have Herculean appetites for the diverse and the bizarre. Don and Mike. Sorry about that. With the, uh, you know, the 
the uh, Don and Mike show. Right. The pressure of doing live commercials is back. Right. Don, if yep. I didn't mention it to you, though, great job. Right back at you. Thank you. <laughs> Hard to believe we didn't uh, practice that. And uh, that's, incidentally, not the one that I had to have the client meeting about. Oh, very good. Not, Amen. Not the product that you'll be hearing about soon. Uh, yeah. Hi, hi there, Buzz. Hi, Don and Mike. Do you know how many people in this building were flipped out about that one 60-second commercial that we just did that uh, only ran in D.C.? Yeah, all, and they were, they were freaked out, I, and I thought it was magnificent. Charlie hey, said, and... Let me ask Charlie how many people called him about that one spot today. And they have nothing to worry about. I have to turn for you. Please hold. <laughs> that was interesting. Yeah, it sure was. That was interesting. Oh. Hey, how many people uh, called you today to inquire about that spot? Four. <laughs> Four. Four people for that 60-second commercial. And all of them the same thing. Do they know that starts today? <laughs> Came off without a hitch. A plus. A it was plus. great. Keep up the stellar work. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Charlie. Bye. Bye, bye. Jesus Christ. Four people. Do they know what starts today? Hey, just give us the copy. Yeah. Really? Hi, okay. Buzz. Hi, Donna Mike. Well, despite having all those animals, it appears Michael Jackson won't be getting an agricultural break on his property tax. Thank you. Officials in Santa Barbara County, home of Jacko's Neverland Ranch, say he's already saving 50% since he leases half his land to a cattle rancher. Rub it on the blanket. As it stands, the tax bill is $13,000. Taste my friendship. But Jackson's accountants are still trying to get that bill lowered. There'll be another meeting about this on Friday. Put your hand on it. In <laughs> sinker Lance Bass says he still wants to go into space. He's good. He says the recent shuttle disaster has not changed his mind and that he's still going someday. Let's put him on the outside of the capsule, though. <laughs> Bass was supposed to have gone into orbit last fall with the Russians, but his financial backers didn't come through. He says the money will come. Quoting him, somebody's going to want to do a documentary about it, so we'll see. We'll put that, that person is his cousin Marty. <laughs> we'll put that all together in the next couple of years. I'll tell you really how you finance this how? thing. What? Um, well, first off, People, it's amazing what people will pay for. Yeah, oh yeah. That I was reading over the weekend about a girl in California who wanted a boob job. Mm. Yeah. And, I heard about that. And she started, nice. started a website <laughs> mm -hmm. saying, pay for my boobs. Mm -hmm. Now, she's not promising to show uh, what they look like before. Right. Or what they look like after. Not nude, anyway. Right. right. And she'll wear a low-cut top. Right. But she won't show the boobs. Right. Mm -hmm. She got five thousand mm -hmm. dollars. She got more than enough money to get a boob job just from horny guys on the internet. That is why this is the greatest country in the, in the world. Amen. Now, I like, almost said the greatest country in America. Here, here's <laughs> the point. There's no payoff on that for the for the schmucks that gave her money for a boob job. But imagine, really, if you donated money to the thought that, and I know realistically, you can't strap. Lance Bass to the nose of 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 the rocket of ship. Of course you can't, Don. <laughs> let's say that you go to NASA uh -huh. and you say, "This is one that's going to be," and we don't even need to to blow it up real good. Just lost in space. Mm -hmm. That we're going to send him up, but we're not bringing him back. Right. And you go to the public, and. You get an underground grassroots movement. Our total is two million five hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> Where and he's so dumb, he'll never know. Where's right? the tether? <laughs> that what you're doing, you're saying to you people. You bring the rocket back with everybody else on it, but he stays up there, right? Right, because he's got his own special Lance Bass capsule. Go Ready for it. your spacewalk, Mister Bass? <laughs> you Mike. That, right. That's it. That's it. Then it would be like. This is so cool. <laughs> <laughs> and not only that, goodbye, Sal. You charge pay per view. Mm -hmm. You get the satellite going. Yeah, there with, go. wait, wait, what, what is that big uh, that big telescope we have? The, uh, uh, the Hubble. Hubble. The Hubble. Mm -hmm. Use the Hubble. Mm -hmm. First of all, the people that are paying, they all know that they're paying yeah. to see Lance Bass die. But Lance doesn't know. <laughs> And that's what makes it so great. Yeah. It's not to see him die, it's to see him float away. That's right. But you know he'll die. Eventually. And, yeah. and with the telescope, you'd be able to zoom in when he finally runs out of oxygen. Mm -hmm. oh. And then it's like in that movie Red Planet. Right. Where The eyes bug out. It's just a skeleton then. Oh, man. Bye bye, Bass. <laughs> Fantastic. But you know, even as dumb as he is, you'd never keep it a secret from him. No. Sure you would. I don't think he's that stupid. Oh. He's a bass. 
<laughs> You're right. He is that stupid. <laughs> well, He's hosting that America's Greatest Kids show. How do you think he got hey, tricked into that? Don't you diss that show. I watched that with my kids last night. Yeah, but you watched that for Slater. I felt really bad. I did some bad parenting last night because I watched oh. that America's Funniest Kids show. Yeah. Yeah. And we laughed at one of the kids. Oh, dear. Because the kid was kind of goofy. <laughs> and I know I shouldn't do that. You say, everybody's fine. Everybody's perfect. But you just... Now, there's this like, one that's kid. good parenting. It's like seven-year-old singing New York, New York <laughs> that really looked like a... Uh, a uh, a young, I'm trying to think of, of the, 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 the actress that she resembled, but she was so, she was a little chubby, had kind of a moon face, mm. and she was wearing one of those derbies with the sparkly vest on. Oh, you, and just she, say, you just say, girl, someday that lady will grow up to be a whore. <laughs> <laughs> now stop that. I can't say that. Sure you can. Well, we all had ice cream afterwards. <laughs> well, that fixes everything. Mm -hmm. well, there's no Jerry Lewis or Ed McMahon, but there is a telethon for Iraq. The telethon started yesterday in Saudi Arabia to raise money for the people of Iraq who've been adversely affected by the war. Saudi Arabia is a rich country. The telethon raised well over $2 million in the first three hours. And now here's your host, Sean Penn. <laughs> Hi there. The oil shake behind the show says he did it, quote, from a desire to satisfy God. Sean Penn, Susan Sarandon, Tim Robbins, and the Dixie Chicks. There they all are. And I'll drink to that. <laughs> the oil shake donated the first half million dollars of that money. The Saudis were officially against the war, but gave us strategic help in driving out Saddam Hussein. I'll drink to that. Lakers star Kobe Bryant is thinking about becoming a free agent next year and uh, not uh, yes. Excuse me, I'm sorry. We do have tape. Yes. Oh, of the telethon? Uh, of the telethon oh, last well, night. In that case. This is the very, very end of the telethon. The exciting part. Last night. Right now, Ed, you know what? I would like you to take a look <laughs> at the tote board, sir. Right, they had Ed. Do that. Ed was there. Wow. All right, let's see it. Look, he's wearing a turban. That number is 17,000. Oh, thank you. Brought us good luck, Tyler. No, Ed, 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 yeah. count, count, count the numbers again. 17,000. 17. What did I say, thousand? Million, baby. See, I'm just trying to get you angry with me so you'll give me more money. That's what it is. Oh, 17 oh, oh, oh. million. I'm sorry. God. Ed. Ed. And, I, and Buzz, I heard it, wearing a turban. Yes. Uh, one for Buzz. I will. One for Buzz. <laughs> Lakers star Kobe Bryant is thinking about becoming a free agent next year, and not just for basketball. He's making himself available for slam ball as well. Oh. His dad says Kobe's good oh. at slam ball, a made-for-TV sport that oh, combines no. basketball with trampolines and full-body contact. you got to mention that. That's Sorry. the break, right? Yeah. Is that the break? Yeah. You get Kobe mm -hmm. in slam ball. Yeah. People watch slam ball. Keep in mind, I had mm -hmm. the chance to get on this at the ground floor level. Right. What's the first rule of slam ball? <laughs> Don't, talk <laughs> Don't talk about slam ball. <laughs> Kobe's dad is currently coaching slam ball, which starts its next season in August on Spike TV. Well, I'll talk to his sister. Lane. <laughs> now, maybe Lane she can talk some sense into him. I sure hope so. That lady. Well, porn stars have been doing it, and now regular guys are doing it, too, shaving their privates. Men's Journal Magazine says, says right. more and more men are shaving their pubic areas. Feels so good. The magazine says it knows this <laughs> based on the number of inquiries it gets on its website for tips oh, wow. on the best wonderful. methods. Yes. Wow. Slowly around wow. here. Make a little pathway there. I'm wow. so damn hairy. Wow. Yes. I'm Rob. Wrong. Thank you. There we go. I'll just finish right here this little spot. And I've made a star. A star pattern. Well, the magazine's article about this is getting hit by one of, out of every six visitors to its website. The article says men are trimming the hair and shaving their scrotums mostly to make the package look bigger. I think we need to do a, uh, a quiz because I got a theory. Get it out. just what doesn't get theory? any better than this. Do you? What? Shave? Never. Okay. I don't. Do Buzz? you? No. No? Okay, no. I'm surprised. Yeah. Rob? I knew where you were going. <laughs> I think you're lying. <laughs> I think you're lying. Robbie? No, sir. I think you're lying, Buzz. So do I. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I think you're lying. 
<laughs> Let's call back there and see if Joe has. Joe. Joe doesn't even get a haircut. Hold on, buddy. Joe? Thank you, Pam. Hey, you ever shave your pubes? Or 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 trim them? Trim them, yes. Ah! Oh, yeah. <laughs> I haven't asked Larry. Larry's right there. <laughs> Put Larry Michael on the phone. He's not here right now. Oh, oh. stepped away. Do you want me to shave them? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Consider it done. <laughs> yes. But I. But now I'm. Give I'm, me that porn star look. Yeah. There, it's all about the porn stars. I mean, it's too gay if we ask Joe to shave his privates and come in and show us. <laughs> yeah, no, that would be that going too gay. Joe, going too far. Too gay, but do it anyway, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> I was kidding. Oh, okay. Right. You're not going to believe it. Incredible. <laughs> okay, bye, Joe. Uh, bye, bye. Incredible. <laughs> so, what does David Letterman popcorn taste like? We'll have to wait for Dave to tell us. A guy, Jingles. a guy just opened. <laughs> Good yeah. idea. A guy's just opened a gourmet popcorn place in New York's Times Square called Popcorn Indiana. Oh, maybe we'll find out. Hold on. Hey, buddy, it's your old pal Dave. Listen, hey, Dave. you've never been funnier than you've been this morning. Right. Either that or I'm all goofy on Pop-Tarts. <laughs> <laughs> you know, bad sign for that show. He's been off uh, yeah. for a couple of days. Yeah. Uh, maybe a week. I don't know. Right. Whatever a it week is. Last, uh, last night, we were watching that John Grisham thing, mm -hmm. and they were promoing Letterman and his big guest for the start of the sweeps. Who's he got? Is that idiot from the Columbus Zoo? Oh. Uh, Hannah. Jack, Jack Hanna. Hannah. Jack Hanna. It's like that's the best you can do. That wow. sucks. I guarantee Leno's got a better guest tonight for sweeps. I guarantee. Yeah. Don't want it. Finally. And I uh, I shave. <laughs> I'm sorry, Buzz. What, what, what was the story about the popcorn? Oh, Dave gets to pick his own popcorn flavor. That's okay. it. That's a new place in Times no. Square. And finally, John King of Lewisburg, West Virginia, may never again go to fast food places. John says that on June 21st, three years ago, he bought a couple of Whoppers. I went back to his store. He opened his, quoting John, I took a bite out of it. It tasted funny. I ran to the bathroom and threw up. I took the bun off. I saw something brown mixed in with the fixings. It smelled like crap. It looked like, how can I phrase this, like you're going to use the bathroom, end quote. But the employees say there was no tampering, and their bosses backed them up. After an hour of deliberations, the jury found Burger King innocent. John won't get a dime from his lawsuit. I'm Buzz Burbank. Wow. On the Don and Mike Show. Thank you, Buzz. <laughs> I'm hungry. <laughs> we gotta go. Oh, gosh. I was hoping. Yeah, I was hoping that some, <laughs> some guy was at the drive thru was like squatting or something. We'll never know. I hate a happy ending, Buzz. <laughs> uh, good day to you, sir. 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 Hey, hey, Rusty. Hey, do you promise not to hate? <laughs> we both lied to God yesterday. BM, Peter Tim. Till we meet again, this is Sammy Davis Jr. saying, uh, be kind, be nice, and I hope the next performer has the pleasure of having as nice an audience as you've been tonight. And let me leave you swinging.